Talk News 4 today. Welcome to Notre Dame Football, presented by Invesco QQQ. Good afternoon, sellout crowd settling in on this first Saturday in October at Notre Dame Stadium for the second straight season hosting a top 10 matchup of undefeated teams. The Irish have arrived at 4-0 with three different quarterbacks. As Brian Kelly, now the winningest coach in Notre Dame history, faces the team he coached before coming to South Bend. Cincinnati made it to a New Year's Six Bowl game last year and riding their senior quarterback are in position to become the first group of five school to make the college football playoffs. One team's championship dream to remain alive after today. Number seven, Cincinnati, and number nine, Notre Dame. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Notre Dame football here on NBC. College playoff implications on the line today, as well as a great familiarity on both sidelines. Those are our main storylines. The winner here is going to be favored, barring something strange happening the rest of the way. So a chance to think about an undefeated season. The Irish remained undefeated in Chicago. They beat Wisconsin. Jack Cohn, the graduate quarterback, injured his leg in that game. He is going to start for the Irish here today. We may see multiple quarterbacks for Notre Dame. They may need them. Cincinnati is a really good team. They're undefeated. They beat Indiana in Bloomington two weeks ago. Forget Power Five. Forget Group of Five. Just use your eyes. This is a really good football team with a quarterback in Desmond Ritter that has a bunch of NFL scouts to see him in person here today. There's another interesting tie. Marcus Freeman, the Irish defensive coordinator, used to be the Cincinnati defensive coordinator the last four years. So ties and emotions all over the field on this Saturday. Drew Brees and Catherine Tappett will join me, and then we'll have kickoff. But first, down to the field to Jack Collinsworth, Corey Robinson, and the U.S. Bank. Countdown to kickoff. Jack. Yeah, Mike, and one of the Bearcats that Coach Freeman told us that he misses coaching most, a man they call Sauce Gardner, potential first-round pick at cornerback. How will Cincinnati try to use him today? Sauce is going to cut off all life support to an entire side of the field, Jack. I mean, Notre Dame can try if they want to, but I don't think we're going to see many opportunities over there because let me give you a stat right here. Gardner has not allowed a single touchdown in his entire career. Not like last year or this year ever in college. So, no, I don't think anyone's going to go that way. Keep an eye on the sauce today. That's what you're trying to tell me. Keep an eye over there for sure. <laughs> We've had our eye on these top ten matchup over in the SEC. Georgia, they look good this year, don't they? Georgia Bulldogs taking on Arkansas. A couple 4-0 teams. Stetson Bennett gets the start at quarterback. JT Daniels is out, but it's the run game. Early Kendall Minton. Help from the big man up front. So look at number 88. His name is Jalen Carter. He's a D lineman. He blocks three guys like a row of bowling balls, man. And you just don't see that in SEC football, especially at the goal line. Later in the first, Dan Jackson gets a hand on this punt. Zamir White dives on it for the Georgia touchdown. He had a rushing touchdown earlier than White. Second score came a little easier, 27 to nothing. They are putting a number right now on Arkansas in the third quarter. Michigan Wolverines, Wisconsin Badgers, undefeated Michigan picking up where Notre Dame left off. Two long. Wisconsin now. This is Michigan offense putting over 40 points per game. This time Cornelius Johnson for the touchdown. Most of those came on the ground, but there we saw him throwing the ball here. Wisconsin, unbelievable catch. It's an all or nothing play by the DB, but he comes down with it. Graham Mertz completed zero passes for the first 20 minutes of the game, and then right before halftime, finding some life. DK again in the corner for the score. Mertz was sacked and left the game in the third quarter. Michigan would score another touchdown at the beginning of the second half, 20 to 10 in the third quarter. Right here behind us, these schools will remember this game. Cincinnati and Notre Dame, two unbeatens in the top 10. This has been the U.S. Bank Countdown to Kickoff. It's not just a match between your severe weather expert. Rained earlier, dry now. Temperature in the 70s for this top 10 matchup. Just a moment ago, Brian Kelly with these words for his team. I love this one.
from the very first play. Does everybody got that? That's how we're playing. Yeah, Brian Kelly with great honesty of how much he loves this team, building into a collective group that has won 26 in a row in this stadium. Tough test today. Notre Dame tries to stay undefeated. And here come the Irish. Four and six at Cincinnati. In three years before coming to South Bend, Brian Kelly took the Bearcats to the Orange and Sugar Bowl. He's got Jack Cohn as quarterback. Game time decision with the leg injury practiced the last few days and will start. It's been a long time since Bearcat football's been in South Bend. 121 years. But the number seven team in the country is favored on the road this afternoon. And here comes Cincinnati. Luke Fickle, former Ohio State player and assistant, year four, one of the hottest names in the coaching business. Desmond Ritter, fourth year as the starting quarterback, makes his 39th start here today. To the sideline now, and Catherine Tappen. KT. Coach Jack Cohn will be your starter today, but you practice with three different quarterbacks all week, so what impact will that have on your offense today? Well, I hope we're ready because of it. Um, you know, Jack deserves the start. Um, he's healthy, and uh, there's nothing that he did that wouldn't allow him to come back here today and start for us again. Uh, we've kept the other guys ready. Tyler will play today, too, so there'll be at least two quarterbacks playing today for us. The Bearcats are the only ranked opponent remaining on your schedule. Well, as it stands today, what is the number one priority facing number seven, Cincinnati? Well, obviously, they've got a great defense. And, uh, you know, Ritter is an outstanding quarterback. So, you know, they're they're deserving of their ranking. They're, you know, obviously come in here as the number seventh ranked team in the country. We've got to play a complete football game against a really good team. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Thanks, Catherine. Mike? All right, Catherine, thank you. With Drew Brees, are we having a great weekend or what? This reunion theme is going to continue because we leave this game, go to Foxborough for Tom Brady's return with the Buc Buccaneers on Sunday Night Football. But we've got all these reunions. Brian Kelly used to coach at Cincinnati. But Marcus Freeman, the new Notre Dame defensive coordinator, he was at UC the prior four seasons. Know these guys really well. His current group is going to have a challenge on their hands today. They will. And, and they've had some struggles thus far this season, but I really feel like they came into their own last week. They're starting to play the scheme that Marcus Freeman has put into place. And you saw him play with a whole other level of confidence. Caused a bunch of turnovers. That's the type of scheme he wants to play. So now, <laughs> take a step into this week. Desmond Ritter, arguably the best quarterback they're going to face all, all year. He can throw the ball down the field. He's electric. He can make plays with his legs, and he's got some weapons to throw to as well. All right, Cincinnati's defense, the one Freeman used to coach, they're still really good. Some NFL-level players that we've talked about already here in the broadcast. We'll develop that more as we go through. So Notre Dame with this offense has been searching and searching. What, what do you see the Irish trying to do here this afternoon? Well, first and foremost, I want to see who all the quarterbacks are going to be. <laughs> I, I, never before have I gone into a game it feel, felt like it's going to take all three quarterbacks to win this game. Mm. Jack Cohn has done so many things for this Notre Dame uh, team thus far, but he got hurt last week. Who knows how healthy he'll be or effective today. Right. Drew Pine came in the game. The mm -hmm. young gunslinger created a spark. Everyone rallied around him. He played great. And of course, Tyler Buckner, who was injured last uh, week, but came uh, has really been the, the mainstay with their run game thus right. far. So I, I think it takes all three guys to win this game today. Yeah, you made a great point as we were preparing for this. Buckner adds to their run game, which has been missing thus far this season for Notre Dame. So as we said, you look down the schedule, this may be the toughest opponent either team has left. So any dreams of the playoff and an undefeated season may come down to the next three and a half hours in South Bend. A lot of red from Cincinnati, a lot of green supporting the Irish, and here we go. Bales from Westfield in Indiana is the kickoff man. They've had trouble kicking the ball out of bounds too often this year. Notre Dame took one back in Soldier Field to flip the game. Chris Tyree did that, and he awaits for the Irish. The toss was won by Cincinnati, and they deferred the option of the second half. Glad you are with us. Number seven, number nine, off we go from South Bay. Tyree reads the hang time. It's up there too long. It's a touchback. Irish will take over 
at 25. So stop me if you've heard this before, but the Notre Dame's going to feature their tight end, Michael Mayer. He's had a terrific season so far and very important for this game. He's from 25 miles from Cincinnati, so he has a very good feeling about the Bearcats on the other side. Michael Carmody is back. He's missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury. That uh, rotation at left tackle continues. Carmody, who has played 67 snaps this year, is back in. Tosh Baker, who's been the start of the last couple of games, not available for the Irish here today. And as mentioned, Jack Cohn from Long Island, the Wisconsin transfer, gets the start. From the 25, it's a run, and a good run for Kyron Williams to the 41-yard line. A pickup of 16. One of the better runs for Notre Dame this season. You see how Notre Dame spreads out the formation, gets, gets the defensive back spread out as well. Look at this interior box. You've only got four defenders with five offensive linemen to block. If you get run looks like that, you should be running the ball all day. From the 41, it is Cone. Pressure's picked up. Mayor the tight end. Gain of just about five to the 46-yard line. So it wasn't exactly a high ankle sprain. It was a soft tissue injury for Jack Cone. Earlier in the week, he wasn't great in terms of mobility, but Brian Kelly felt like he was more confident, Drew, as the week went on in practice. Just a level of experience that Jack Cone brings. Uh, he, he's, he's done a great job thus far this year. You know, he, he isn't known for being a real mobile guy anyway. I mean, he's a stand tall in the pocket and throw the ball kind of guy. But it's really just a matter of whether it affects his ability to throw the ball with velocity and accuracy. Cincinnati jumped. Notre Dame tried to catch him. We have our first flag of the afternoon. Marcus Woods is the ACC official assigned to this top 10 matchup. Offside, defense, jumped in the neutral zone, causing the offense to react. Five-yard penalty, second down. Cincinnati had too many penalties against Indiana. They had 11 two weeks ago in Bloomington. They averaged 7.3 per game. Luke Fickle, the former nose guard from his Buckeye playing days. Didn't like what happened there. So it's just shy of a first down by inches. It is second in inches technically. And the first down is picked up here by Williams, who will spin down to the Bearcats side at the 46-yard line. Here is the Cincinnati defense. NFL scouts get a close look at Majay Sanders today. Seven sacks last year reached the team in pressures this year. Darian Beavers took over the second half of the game against IU, and that's the guy named Sauce. Ahmad Gardner, All-America last year, sees very few throws from opposing defenses. As some have said, if you're going to have a nickname Sauce, you better be pretty good, and he has been very good. There's a little bit of confusion here on was that a first down or not on that initial play, or the last play, I should say. Now the officials are in full conversation. I think it should have been because it was touching the 49-yard line. They gave Mayer five on the prior play. This should have been five. The down box had it at second and inches. It will be second down. But they're going to say that the penalty got Notre Dame a first down. They made the mistake moving the chains, and it will be now second and eight for the Irish. The ability for Notre Dame to establish the run here is important, Mike. A couple times already. Austin in motion out of the backfield. It's Williams. Kyron Williams. A little dead leg for the first down for Notre Dame. And that is where it's been an extension of the run game. Passing to the running backs this year. Yeah, this is something that Notre Dame needs to do a better job of today. And that's just getting the ball out of the quarterback's hands quickly. Great catch by Kyron Williams here. So locate that ball a little bit better. Give him a chance to get in space front up defenders and make the miss. If there's guys that can do that, it's these two running backs for Notre Dame. Can we get a whistle here and Notre Dame will take time out. The Irish are on the move at the 36-yard line. Have to burn one early. I'm not sure if it was a personnel issue in the huddle. 
Drew, you mentioned before, let's dig a little bit deeper on that because of the multiple quarterbacks. We saw quarterbacks coming through one after the other after the other in practice. It's a unique feel, but I don't feel like it's in any way dividing the team right now. No, it, it, it is amazing. I don't think I've ever seen anything like what we saw this week in practice <laughs> with literally quarterbacks rotating almost every other play. And not two quarterbacks, we're seeing three quarterbacks. And I think the purpose of a lot of that was to get certain guys reps at things that maybe they hadn't been able to rep very much up until this point. Jack Cohn is a very experienced player. He's he's played a lot of football. So I think the emphasis was, hey, let's get some of these young guys reps in the event that, you know, Jack Cohn can't play or, you know, the, the, the leg isn't where he needs it to be. And it does take a special group of guys, mm. character, mindset, and the way that they're willing to support one another, understanding that that's what's best for the team. And Tommy Reese told us in the last couple of weeks, this is the best quarterback room he's been a part of, and he played here, obviously, a decade or so ago. Both Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree are in. It's a hand to Tyree, who tries to get to the edge, and Darian Beavers, the player we highlighted in the lineups, making his 31st start for the Bearcats, was there for the tackle. So expect to see a lot of this today. 23 Kyron Williams, 25 Chris Tyree. They're going to be on the field together much more than we've seen before. And what are they doing with them? One of them's probably getting the ball. You just don't know which one. And talking to those two guys this week, Mike, the way that they feed off of one another, the way that they support one another, and in that case, Kyron Williams, who's used to being the lead tailback, he's out front blocking for Chris Tyree. Technically, that was a pass. Cone stumbles on his drop, gets it to Mayer, and that's going to go nowhere. All over was Ty Van Fossen, the strong side linebacker, and it will bring up third and long for Notre Dame. I do like the mix of play calls that we've seen thus far in this first drive. We've had a few run plays. Here's a naked bootleg to Michael Mayer. I don't think you can get the ball to Michael Mayer enough in this game. Mm. I think that's where the matchups lie. Cincinnati has two very good corners in Ahmad Gardner and Kobe Bryant on the outside. So if I'm Notre Dame, I'm thinking, let's work the interior of the field. Let's work the tight ends. Let's work the running backs. Let's work the slot receivers. Third and ten. Cincinnati brings four. Cone throws in the pocket. Incomplete, inaccurate. It was Kobe Bryant, named after the late, great NBA star, spelled differently. Bryant was over there in coverage. It was a poor pass from Cone. The field goal attempt from here will be 53 yards. Let's see what they'll do. You know, this is one where you really feel like this should be a completion. You've got free access up top to Avery Davis. Just have to locate that ball a little bit better. Maybe a little bit better anticipation. Looks like Jack Cone slipped a little bit, but they fourth down. Let's see what happens here. And fourth and ten as well. You can see Cone looking over the sideline. Williams so good in pressure pickup as a running back. Point now what he thought was coming. Cincinnati brings five, Cone throws, and it is caught by Mayer. A fourth down pickup to the 16-yard line. First down for the Irish in a gain of 20. How about this, Mike? Fourth and 10, and the Irish are going for it. But why not when you got a guy like Michael Mayer one-on-one? -on -one? I don't care who's trying to cover him. This is a guy who can get separation. He's a big target. Throw it to your best player. I was on the safety, Javon Hicks, at a Coleraine High School in Cincinnati. There's a lot of local talent right in the Bearcats' backyard that make this program one of the better ones in the country. Irish in the red zone. From the 16, here is Cone, throws to Mayer again, inside the 10, right here, and he's got another first down at the 6. Michael Mayer, four catches already. I really like the play design from Tommy Reese here. They're going to bring Avery Davis in motion, fake the speed sweep to him. Watch Kyron Williams now. The attention that he draws, he opens up that underneath flat area for Michael Mayer to catch just a simple shallow cross, but you get 10 yards. Great tempo and rhythm that the Irish have on this drive. First and goal, Notre Dame on their opening drive. Williams inside, no running lane there. He'll be stopped by that uh, big Bearcat front. Jabari Taylor, Jawan Bricks. Now, this is a really good red zone defense. Red zone stats sometimes may lie to you a little bit on a, a possession or two, but you watch Cincinnati in these 11 red zone possessions, and they have been outstanding this year. And that's one of the reasons why. It's Mike Tressel, nephew of the legendary coach Jim Tressel, 14 years at Michigan State, now the defensive coordinator at UC. 
Second and goal. Pressure's picked up. Cole escapes, throws incomplete reception to Sauce Gardner. He just put it up under pressure, and Gardner was waiting for it. And Notre Dame continues to struggle in its red zone offensive trips. And so Jack Cohn feels a little bit of pressure here. So he drifts right. He's trying to find Kevin Austin on a deep over route in the back of the end zone. He just can't get enough on the ball. And unfortunately, he falls in the hands of Sauce Gardner. Really not a mistake you can make at this point in the game. Good drive for the Irish, but the star on defense for Cincinnati with the takeaway. Bearcat ball after this. Jersey Mike's a sub above. So Cincinnati will take over at the five-yard line after the interception by Sauce Gardner. Fans cheering Brian Kelly as they play the video. Acknowledging Kelly last week becoming the all-time winningest coach in Notre Dame history. And they keep the noise up for Ritter and the backed-up offense. And he passes complete for a first down to the 14-yard line caught by Alec Pierce. Let's go back to the pick real quick. Yeah, I'll tell you why this happened here. So, look at Darian Beavers right here, linebacker. He's actually covering Kyron Williams. But when he feels Kyron Williams block... He goes ahead and triggers. He's what causes Jack Cohn to throw that ball off balance, not get enough into it, and really is the one who forced the interception. Second and one, Michael Young Jr., former Notre Dame receiver, is the motion man there, and Ritter gets it to him. And Young will have a first down in his return to Notre Dame Stadium, just shy of the 20-yard line. So Ritter is from Louisville. He thought about going to the NFL. Would have probably been a mid-round pick last year. Chose to come back to Cincinnati. Has a young daughter, wanted to be around family. And also, as he told us, he wanted to improve his name in Cincinnati history. He saw the 33-5 and five number. All the stats you look at with Ritter are very good. And everyone around this program raves about what he has brought to them. He's an impressive young man. the 20. Ritter got it out quick, but well overthrown. Nowhere near Tyler Scott, his sophomore receiver. So here are the guys handling the ball around Ritter. Jerome Ford's a transfer from Alabama. Good back. They want to get going a little bit more. They also like Josh Wiley over there on the right side, the tight end. 81. Now up front, may not be as good. James Tunstall makes his first start at left tackle. He played most of the game two weeks ago against Indiana, and Lawrence Metz, the junior from Germany who played the entire game against IU starts for Vince McConnell, who's out again today. On second and ten, Ritter, Kyle Hamilton rejects it. Hamilton, the All-America safety for the Irish, coming free and knocked it down to set up third down. Look at Kyle Hamilton, low around the line of scrimmage, in a pressure position. He's the kind of guy with his range, with his length, with his, with, with, with his instincts, he does so much for this Irish defense. He's deep middle of the field, he's covering tight ends, slot receivers man-to-man, -man, and he's a great pressure player when they decide to bring him as well. Saw him in the shot there, he's deep middle for third and check. Since he's got four out there, Ritter's pass is incomplete. Try to get into Wiley, his tight end, recovered from Tariq Bracey. One first down, and the Bearcats going to kick it away. That's a really good first series for the Irish defense. You know they wanted to come out and set the tone early, playing a veteran quarterback like Desmond Ritter, who's really a player coach on the field. You know you're going to have to show him things that he hasn't seen before. I expect the Irish defense to really mix it up today. Mason Fletcher, Australian punter, gets rid of it. Kyron Williams got to go back and get it in retreat and will not go anywhere. He'll be marked at the 28-yard line. Very well covered by Cincinnati on that solid line drive kick. Opening quarter, beautiful day, South Bend. When you're driving a Lincoln... Notre Dame football is brought to you by... Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. And by Lincoln and the power of Sanctuary. 
Everybody likes to get their side, the picture with the Play Like a Champion Today sign. Click Dick by Tal. Our longtime friend's wife, Lorraine. They're such Irish supporters, always here for a game or two during the year. Good to see Dickie V. Get my picture, get my picture. <laughs> Chris Tyree runs to the left. Gain of a couple of yards. Each team's had the ball once. What's your early sense with what you saw with Cincinnati's defense and how they're playing Notre Dame, True. You know, there's, there, there's no question that the strength of that defense is on the edge with their two corners and the way that they rotate these defensive linemen in and out to generate pass rush. Tons of movement up front. I feel like Notre Dame's done a good job of just mixing up what they're doing. Second and eight, straight run here. Tyree trying to scoot out to the right. He gets a few yards. And Notre Dame had a terrible running game against Wisconsin. No sack yardage is thrown in there. But their long run was eight. It was the fewest rushing yards, a net total of three, in 14 years. The offensive line has struggled, but they still need to run the ball, in your opinion, at least a little bit just to keep people honest. They do, and you can be strategic about that. It's not like, hey, we're just going to hand it off to hand it off and run into a brick wall. I mean, let's let's pick the right looks to run into, and if not, let's just make sure we're getting the ball out of our hands quickly in the passing game so we're not taking negative plays. Lindsay in motion, third and five. They rush three, Cone steps up, dishes it off to Wilkins, who has the first down at the 39-yard line. Joe Wilkins Jr. took a very big hit from Deshaun Case. He's going to come over and get looked at, but he hung on to the ball, and he has the first down. So Notre Dame runs a bunch of these crossing routes, trying to create picks. Joe Wilkins comes out on the other side. That's always a tough, it's a tough one for the receiver. There's usually defenders lingering out there that are ready to hit you in the thigh boards. Something went flying off the equipment there. Bears pick up a sixth first down of this first quarter, but they'll be pushed back here. All start. Offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's Josh Lug over on the right side. The experienced offensive tackle as Wilkins is off into the blue tent. When I think about Notre Dame's offense and where they can make the biggest improvements, it's avoiding the negative plays. So the, the five-yard offsides penalties, the, the sacks, the negative runs, if you can avoid those, then you're getting into more efficient offensive football. First and 15, trying to find a running lane with Tyree, and he'll only gain a couple of yards. And how about Gardner? The corner says, I couldn't do it in the run game, too. He and Darian Beavers come down to combine on the tackle. Darian Beavers, number zero on this Cincinnati Bearcat defense, is a stud. Mm -hmm. Amazing his journey, too. Safety to linebacker to defensive end, back to linebacker, gaining about 100 pounds along the journey. Really good football player. Second down here, Cone from the pocket. Avery Davis, the slot receiver for the Irish, goes to the 43-yard line. That's working on Arquan Bush, the nickel corner. It'll be third and about six here for the Irish. This is where the Irish need to live today, in this third and medium range. There's lots of play calls for Tommy Reese to be able to dial up to get first downs with the weapons he has, especially inside Michael Mayer, Avery Davis, the running backs. It's harder when you get in those third and longer situations. And since he just rushed in three and dropping eight, Cone trying to drop it in there from Lindsey. Incomplete. And they will punt. So one first down on that drive for the Irish. And they'll bring out Jay Bramlett to kick it away. Bramlett had a 72-yarder at Soldier Field. His uh, long punt of his Irish career, elite baseball player. We've seen his work as a runner and also as a passer, as a high school quarterback. Ryan Montgomery is back deep to receive for the Bearcats. Tough to catch one, 36 yards, not a lot of hang time, so room for Montgomery to return it up the sideline to the 38-yard line. So well done on the kick, Isaiah Pryor the tackle, decent field position for Cincinnati, 10 minutes into this opening quarter. Rib-shaped sandwich. Arby's real country style rib sandwich. City on NBCSN. 
to Notre Dame football by raising a pint of Guinness. Now a proud partner and official beer of Fighting Irish alumni and fans. Please drink responsibly. Front of the campus in South Bend, Marcus Freeman, Irish defensive coordinator, was out for a run yesterday, and he said, you know, I've known Luke Fickle since I was 17 years old. He recruited me out of Ohio State. Played for him, coached with him, now on opposite sides. As we have, I believe, movement up front. Drew White, the Irish linebacker, was pointing it out. Start. Off it, number 51. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's the right guard, Lawrence Menson. That was a problem, as we mentioned. So these guys know each other. How well? They each have six kids. Marcus and his wife, Joanna, have Luke and his wife, Amy, as godparents to Rocco, the Freeman's young son. They haven't talked much this week. They didn't talk much really this year since they left working together. They knew this week was coming, and Marcus and Luke both kind of gave it a hint that after this, they'll get back to their weekly phone calls and check it in. Very emotional on both sides of this one. First and 15 for Ritter, swings it out to Leonard Taylor, his tight end. And a gain of about four, Clarence Lewis over there on the corner. You know, while we're here, we'll show you the Notre Dame starting defense. Howard Cross is in again. Continued injury up front for Kirk Heinisch, who's out with a concussion. Should be back next week. Drew White had a pick six, one of two in the fourth quarter avalanche at Soldier Field. And Cam Hart had two picks against Wisconsin. The converted receiver who's moved sides as a corner is feeling comfortable now on the field corner. The wide side. Second and nine. Ritter going to keep it. Nowhere to go. We just talked about Howard Cross, the third. He was over there with Jason Adam Lolo to make the tackle on the first rush by the Bearcats today. Watch what Notre Dame does here. They crash the defensive end and then scrape the nose guard around, knowing that the quarterback's going to pull the ball. Hey, that's a read option pull look for the QB. Unfortunately, he's got a 300-pound nose guard there. Where'd this guy come from? Defense has been a far cry from the opener against Florida State. Third and 10, Ritter complete for the first down. Alec Pierce on the run as Pierce gets chucked down by Cam Hart, but a good catch and run by the senior from Glen Ellen, Illinois. Hey, watch Desmond Ritter here. Watch the Notre Dame defense first off. All these defenders just running around. Desmond Ritter stays balanced, poised in the pocket, goes through his progression, hits the deep, uh, the deep curl, just shows his veteran poise and presence in the pocket. It's a winner. Won about 90% of his games. Best percentage in the FBS. Deep drop here, Ritter. Shot play downfield for Pierce. It is broken up by Clarence Lewis. Shot play for the big target. And the Irish boundary corner from Edison, New Jersey, right on it. This, this Cincinnati offense wants to take their shots. Have a couple steps on it, but there's no Clarence foul. Lewis does a great job. Back. There was a flag, and after conversation, they say no roughing the passer. Well done by Clarence Lewis. The tendency for a lot of DBs in that situation is to start to panic, to start to grab, and then you get the P.I. penalty call. Instead, Clarence Lewis, very poised, runs up, just kind of puts his hand on him, jumps up, knocks it away. He's been, it's been, a, it's been a, it's been a good thing for Notre Dame. They moved Cam Hart from the boundary corner out to the field, number five, and put Clarence Lewis now into a press man coverage situation into the boundary. After the pickup of the flag, it's second and ten in the flat for the running back is shut down by Isaiah Pryor. Played at Ohio State. Speaking of Pryor, let's go back to the Pryor play and see what happened. They're roughing the passer that was not called. Here's a hit from Myron Tungavailoa Mosa. Was it up by the chin area? The center judge called it, and after consultation with the referee, surprised that something like that gets picked up. It may not have been in late, but it certainly was up by the headgear. Terry McCauley, three-time Super Bowl ref back in our studio, watching with us, agrees it should have been a flag. Man coverage here. Pressure look. Third and nine, Ritter in trouble. Escapes. Fires on the run, incomplete. He covered by Hamilton all the way down the field with Josh Wiley, the tight end. And after a couple of first downs, Bearcats going to kick it away. 
It's a really nice job by the Notre Dame defense. They're bringing the house. They're bringing all these linebackers. So it's man-to-man -man with no help inside. And they just glove everybody up. There's nobody open. Desmond Ritter does a nice job of extending the play. But credit to the Notre Dame secondary there. They glove him up? Is that a Sean Paytonism? <laughs> <laughs> I like that for good coverage. They glove him up. That's right. There's a lot, a lot of slang. A lot of slang we can throw around. All you DBs loving Drew Brees talking defense, huh? <laughs> will it be stopped before the goal line? And no, it will not. It's where the ball is in college football, not the man. Ball broke the plane. Irish will take over for their third drive at the 20. Two and 18 to go. First quarter settling into a good one in South Bend. Seductive. Tuesday, TV's most anticipated new show is finally here. Don't miss an all-new La Brea. That's Tuesday here on NBC. Well, Drew said, prepare for two, maybe three quarterbacks. Here's two. It is Tyler Buckner, the freshman from Southern California. Checking into the lineup. Very good runner. We have seen him spark the Irish. Especially the game against Toledo, out with a hamstring injury. Second half of Purdue and last week against Wisconsin. Look to take off here, and Cincinnati knows what he does. Is able to erase it. Maje Sanders, their top defensive end right there. So what we've seen from Tyler Buckner in many cases has been getting outside the pocket, either handing the ball off or taking it himself. There they try a design quarterback draw. Nice play by Maje Sanders, one of their better defensive ends. Second and 11, and it will be Buckner keeping and turning it upfield. He's a good open field runner. He's twisted down to the 27-yard line as Beavers was running all the way across with Ty Van Fossil. Well, right on cue, Mike, we said it. Outside the pocket, see the two running backs in the backfield, Chris Tyree, Kyron Williams. It's really a naked, it's a naked bootleg. He can throw it or he can run it. What's your best option? Certainly he's a guy who can get to the perimeter and make explosive plays with his legs. I've seen him throw a little, but not much in his limited role so far. Three of four passing. They're, they're challenging him to throw the ball, Mike. It's man coverage. All the snaps he's been in there thus far. Oh, good job by Kyron Williams. That is such a good run. He gets the first down as he hesitates, delays, and runs with some power as well. There's a flag down on the play, though. Holding. Offense, number 75. 10 yard penalty. Third down. That is two on Josh Lug, the grad student, at that right tackle spot. Here's Josh Lug right there. Uh, grabbing, grabbing the outside of that shoulder pad. We'll call that every time. Brian Cook was the safety, so it becomes third and 12, and Buckner remains in the game at quarterback. They played three consecutive snaps in man coverage against Tyler Buckner. It's a third long situation. Let's see if they go to zone or man. Right field emptied out. Buckner escapes, flips, and throws incomplete with Avery Davis, the intended receiver. So the Buckner series is three and out. Let's see Maje Sanders here, lined up on the left side for most of this game. What he does is he causes Tyler Buckner to have to step up, start to vacate the pocket. Tough throw to flip his hips there and, and make that throw. Good coverage, but, but more importantly, good pass rush. So Kyle Hamilton, the gunner, moved when he saw Cincinnati go into the neutral zone to try to draw the flag while he was in there. Ball start. Ball start. Ball start. Offense number 14. Five-yard penalty. Okay. But Hamilton was too late. It's a flag, it'll back him up five. They can come in the neutral zone, they get back, they're fine. It's a defensive guy trying to draw a defensive penalty. <laughs> <laughs> right? Not a good kick in terms of hang time for Bramlett last time. This is much more like his normal. 48 yards. 
fair catch at the 39-yard line. So the Bearcats are hot in Cincy in the Queen City. Haven't been much to enjoy Skyline Chili and celebrate with. The MLS team, FC Cincinnati, has struggled. The Bengals did win the other night. They're 3-1, and one, but they're trying to get that win percentage to over 30%. The Reds, not going to happen again this year. They've been under 500 the last few years, but the Bearcats have been scorching. 34 and 6 in this run with Luke Fickle as their head coach. Fickle took over for Tommy Tuberville, now a U.S. Senator. Program was not in great shape, but boy, they've gotten fans excited, and the UC fans are showing up to support their team as well. A lot of green and red, Mike. You think it's Christmas? It feels like it, right? Final half minute of the quarter. The run here for Ford, and he is stopped. There's no game here. Drew, look around Drew the stadium and think back to September 9 of 2017 when Georgia was here. And there was a lot of red in the stands. And a welcome to those of you who just watched number two Georgia demolish Arkansas. 37 to nothing. In the other top ten matchup in college football today. This one, not nearing 37 nothing. Much better start in terms of an even game so far. After one here in South Bend. No score between the Bearcats and the Irish. Number seven and number nine. We're back at Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. Glad you're with us on this Saturday as you watch Notre Dame football. Presented by Invesco. QQQ. Hi, I'm Owen Wilson. I'm hosting your trusted weather team. Place looks great sold out, doesn't it? Aerial coverage for South Bend on this Saturday brought to you by Geico. Mike Tirico, Drew Brees, Catherine Tappen. Students getting an early jump on Halloween. No score in that opening quarter. Best drive was Notre Dame's first. After that, it's been the defense who's dominated. Second and ten for Cincinnati. Their quarterback Desmond Ritter's pass is incomplete. As Catherine, he tried to get it over to his outstanding wide receiver, Jaden Thompson. KT? Well, I spoke to Desmond Ritter's mom, Sarah, on her ride from Louisville to South Bend. She said she's going to be a nervous wreck watching him here today. She had Desmond when she was a teenager, and she attributes her son's maturity to the two of them growing up together. She said Desmond was always a very humble kid. She's so proud of him. She said she always knew he could achieve this level of success due to the hard work he put in, but she still pinches herself watching him play, guys. Says mom was uh, that mom with the cowbells in peewee football. I can hear her in the stands. Now I can't hear her, but I keep telling her she can. Over the top for Wiley, the top end, the tight end. It's incomplete. He made a great effort to lay out and try to bring it in. As the Irish were closing with Cam Hart in cover. Fourth down. I love the route combination with these three receivers. Watch this. Watch the tick, the pick that takes place. Springs Josh Wiley wide open. Ah, that's just one you got to have. It's a great opportunity for Cincinnati to get down in Irish territory and continue that drive. Unfortunately, just a little bit long. They haven't run much. They've only run a couple of times. Ritter has opened 5 of 12. Mason Fletcher kicks to Kyron Williams. Scoot out of there. Get it away. Williams runs up on a 39-yarder, and the Irish will take over at the 22. So Williams had such a good year last year behind this offensive line. As you know, graduated most of that line off to the NFL. But you think back, it's been a run of guys winning the top offensive line of the country award in 2017. For four years, they were so good. But this year, changes, injuries, inexperience, and a lack of productivity. Eighth worst in the uh, rushing yards per game. Jeff Quinn, who also has ties. As a matter of fact, when Brian Kelly took the Notre Dame job, it was Quinn who coached Cincinnati in their New Year's Day bowl game. He has tried to find every combination. He's been working with four different left tackles at points during this year. And the running backs have really just been Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree until right now. Sebo Flemister in the game for the first time as Buckner gets no game. He has hit hard. Majay Sanders, the first hit. Deshaun Pace, the second. So Buckner gets another series here. He does. Going back to the offensive line, Mike, quite the change, like you said. Obviously, they lose four starters from last year's team where they were a power-run football team. But then couple that with the fact that you go through three left tackles. Okay, I said left tackle mm. uh, in the first three games. And that continuity is so important up front with the offensive line. They're not going to be able to run the ball the way they did last year. They just have to find other ways. They, they've yet to do that consistently. 
Buckner gives. It is Williams on the run. Tyron will get to the 26-yard line, maybe 25. It's going to be third and seven as Notre Dame goes a second full series with the true freshman Buckner at quarterback. I really want to see Notre Dame throw the ball more with Tyler Buckner. He, he, his snaps are so skewed to the run game, whether he's handing it off to a running back or he's attempting to get outside the pocket. But give this guy some more design pass plays where if it's not open, he can take off and run. But you're getting some favorable man coverage looks. Third and seven. Buckner hit as he throws. It's intercepted. Deshaun Pace has got it. Pick it up blocks. Pace inside the 10. And it's first and goal for Cincinnati. The pressure came, Buckner was hit as he released it, and the Bearcats are going to take over inside the Irish 10. So they're going to Michael Mayer. They like this matchup. So do I. But as Tyler Buckner drops back, watch the game that they run on this left side of the line. Mike J. Sanders runs the stunt, comes back inside. Unfortunately, a ball where you get hit as you're trying to throw, ball comes up short, similar to what happened to Jack Cohn. Earlier, Cincinnati's doing a nice job with their pass rush of forcing the quarterbacks to either gain depth to get away, throw off balance throws, or in that case, hit him while he's throwing, tip the ball up and get another big interception. And two of their best players, disruptive pass rusher in Sanders, guy who's a knack of finding the football and pace. They're the daily double on the turnover. Bearcats take over at the Irish eight, looking for the game's first points. Ritter on the give for a stop. Isaiah Pryor playing a bunch here, along with Myron Tungabailoa Amosa. On the stop, it'll be second down. Notre Dame's defensive line has done a great job thus far in this game of really taking control of the, the trenches there. Cincinnati's not been able to run the ball. There have been a lot of these no gains or, or even lost yardage run plays. If Cincinnati wants to be successful in this game, they're going to have to be able to throw the football. See if they get Ritter out of the pocket and on the run here, second and goal. There he is on the edge. Designed to run for Ritter to the goal line. He gets pounded out of bounds at about the two. Everyone's okay over there as Ritter went up. Ritter oh, and Houston Griffith ran him out of bounds. Ritter, I think, took out a cheerleader on the sideline against IU. He yes. takes out, uh, looks like the, one of the line guys here. But you called it, Mike. These plays where you can get Ritter outside the pocket, whether he's a run threat or a pass threat, he's certainly the type of athlete that can punch it in. Third and goal. More Cincinnati fans down this end than at the other end. Irish fans making noise. Ritter to throw. Wide open in the back for the touchdown. Leonard Taylor, the tight end. And mom taking pictures to remember her son's TD pass to break the seal on this one. Nice play design here. You're just selling out on the run. It's really tough on that safety or, or linebacker, Jack Kaiser, because he's got run responsibilities, so he's thinking, ah, I gotta, gotta beat this block. And at the same time, that guy who is pretending to block you ends up slipping and running a corner route. Easy touchdown for Cincinnati. Tight end who is a converted quarterback, one of two very good tight ends on this team. Cole Smith for the extra point. Knocks it through. Notre Dame's going to figure out their quarterback issues because their offense hasn't been productive. They turn it over. Cincinnati had the ball in great field position. Game's first points. It's Ritter the pass. Taylor the catch. 7 up in Bearcats. Welcome to Allstate. Sing direct TV stream with no annual contract. Time now for the top performance brought to you by Mercedes EQ, Ohio State here in South Bend, 1996. Luke Fickle sacking Ron Paulus. And then Fickle, nose guard, got a flag for Yap in there, by the way, comes up with a pick. This is the advent of the zone blitz era. Nose guard dropped back, got a pick. He pointed out there were no return yards on him. Ohio State beat Notre Dame 29-16. And they rolled in the building one more time. Fickle on the other side, the former Buckeye player. Now Bearcat coach, 
And Ron Paulus, who is the associate athletic director for football involved in all the operations of what Notre Dame does, both laughed about the memory of that play when they met here. I was going to say, is that, is that where you walk across the field pregame and say, hey, <laughs> remember when I intercepted you right. and, and I played nose guard? <laughs> Bales with the kickoff. Tyree is going to... Nothing. It's free. Cincinnati may have gotten the first hand on it. Running up to get it. Tyree couldn't bring it in. The Bearcats have recovered. Wilson Huber. On the recovery. It was a short kickoff. Tyree was on the move to get it, and he muffed it. And Notre Dame has essentially turned the ball over three times here in the first 18 minutes. Certainly not the way Notre Dame wanted to start off this game, and yet the defense has played really well up to this point, and this is where the leadership on that defense needs to step up and say, hey guys, they're putting on our shoulders right now. Another quick change. We're in a tough spot, but you know what? Let's find a way to get a stop here, make them kick a field goal, and then let's get back on track. Officials are reviewing something here. It was a clear muff. Huber's right arm able to sweep in there and grab it. Xavier Watson is trying to get to it for the Irish. A good look at it on the side. Nobody seems to be out of bounds. See a very clear recovery there. Not really clear what they're looking at. At the further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Cincinnati. And the Bearcats will take over at the 17 after taking over the prior drive at their own eight-yard line. Notre Dame in the first four games only turned it over five times. And here are the two interceptions and the muff on the kickoff. That one by Tyree, who was so excited after last week to have the opportunity to take it back against Wisconsin for the 96-yard score that gave the Irish the lead in the third quarter. You know, this is the type of adversity that you need as a team. And certainly this is not the way they wanted to start this game, but... This is where this is where the leadership needs to step up. This is when this is when you see what your team's made of. Desmond Ritter and the Bearcat offense take over at the Irish 17. He's going to pull it out and keep it. Bounce to the outside. Hamilton was blocked. Ritter's got a first down at the nine-yard line. Receivers working to give Ritter some space on the edge. Nice read by Desmond Ritter. He's just reading the outside defender there. He pulls it. That's the key block there. Looks like they might have gotten away with the hold. Oh, yeah. Certainly did. Trey Tucker, who's the kickoff return man for Cincinnati. Blatant hold. Clear miss by the official. So the clear misses are all even at one. From the six. Ritter looking. Throws back to the traffic to Ford for the touchdown. Jerome Ford took the fake, sneaking through. There's a flag here. Thrown around the one-yard line. Yeah, he probably got an ineligible downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's the tackle, James Tunstall. Transfer from Stony Brook on Long Island in New York. So Tunstall's the left tackle here. These RPOs, this is the one challenge you have, right? It, it could be run or pass. The linemen don't know. They're blocking it like it's run. So if they get three yards or more down the field before that ball is thrown, they're going to call you for an eligible downfield. You get three, and he was six. <laughs> I still don't know how they threw the ball to the running back. Who they faked the ball to. First and goal. I'm going to try a shot to the end zone here. Incomplete. He's looking to get Alec Pierce. And the coverage was with Clarence Lewis, who has given up about four inches to the senior receiver, Pierce. This is where a quarterback who can run becomes a great asset. When you get down to the red zone, it's the RPO game, it's get him on the move. 
He gave it to Ford. He's going to work inside and use that powerful lower body to gain six. This about to the five-yard line. Jerome Ford, he's from Tampa, two years at Alabama. And a 79-yard touchdown run against Georgia in that Peach Bowl game at the end of last season. A game that Cincinnati played great, lost to the Dogs on a late field goal by three, but showed everybody this program was as good as almost anybody else playing in the New Year's Six. Third and goal. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage outside with a bunch of hole players, these linebackers. Cam Hart read that. It was almost like Malcolm Butler in the Super Bowl. He saw the pick coming. Remember the Patriots Seahawks Super Bowl, of course. He read it, saw it. He's been jumping those routes the last couple of weeks. Cam Hart. Down. Watch Cam Hart right here. He's off. He's inside. He's waiting for the inside cut. He's to the field. That's typically what teams throw. He jumps in front. He did that twice last week, Mike. Got two interceptions. He's really coming in, into his own here now as the field corner. He played the boundary corner for Notre Dame for the first couple games. They made the switch to the field, and he's really thriving out there. Cole Smith from 23 yards. Just sneaks it in the left side. The Irish giving the ball to the Bearcats at the 18-yard line. The defense keeps him to three. Ten-point lead for favorite Cincinnati in South Bend. Tell someone you're a financial advisor. Tomorrow on NBC. Monday's new drama, Ordinary Joe. It's giving everyone the This Is Us vibes. Fans are calling it the best new show of the season. Do not miss a new Ordinary Joe Monday on NBC. I love the start of that show. First shot of the first episode was commencement at Syracuse University. Joe is a Syracuse guy. Graduates up. My wife and I, we were all in right from the jump. Then, so <laughs> you can't beat that. I good, love it. Good show. Hope you get a chance to check it out Monday night here on the network. Three Notre Dame turnovers. Cincinnati up 10 0. As Alex Bales kicks off, it's Tyree going to try to make amends. He'll fight for the extra yards back his way to the 23-yard line as the Cincinnati defense comes back out on the field. They, the Cincinnati defense really caused these two turnovers. Watch Darian Beavers. He doesn't feel the back get out, so he go ahead and just green dogs and comes hits the quarterback, causes Jack Cohn to be off balance when he throws that ball, underthrows it. And then watch Myshe Sanders here coming inside on the stunt. Hitting Tyler Bucker as he throws, causing that ball to go short and interception. A lot of times mistakes are made by quarterbacks when the pass rush is getting to you too soon, causing you to move off of your spot or hitting you while you're throwing. That's an element of the Cincinnati Bearcat defense and certainly the strength of it. Got a beat on the Irish here. It's back to Jack Cohn at quarterback. First look is a screen. Williams with blockers. First down to Kyron. We're at about the 33-yard line. I really like the screen game with Notre Dame. It's not something they've done a lot of up until this point this year. But when you have backs like Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree, and when the offensive line is struggling, or when the opposing pass rush is getting to you, it's a great way to slow them down and also get the ball to your playmakers in space. Going back in, led that opening drive well. Jump cut to the left. Williams good move to make a mad miss. He goes to the 37-yard line. Hey, you mentioned before you were showing the highlights of the defense so far, you mentioned a green dog. I know everybody's wearing green here, but can you tell me what a green dog is? Green dog would be another one of those terms for hugging the back or, hey, I've got that back man-to-man, -man, but when I see him block or if I see him get tied up in the backfield, I'm just going to go ahead and trigger an, in essence, blitz. So just, just another one of the many football terms that, that we'll use as, as quarterbacks to, to talk about a linebacker who, who, who pressures. So that's one defensive term you've dropped each quarter. What has happened to you? This is <laughs> it's teaching the language of football to, to, to the masses. <laughs> You've gone to the dark side. You're focusing on defense. What is going on? Big hit there. Curtis Brooks. Play to George Washington, a super senior, grad student. He'll be a nightmare when he is physical. The coaches told us, showed it there. This, this Cincinnati defense has obviously been able to get pressure on him in the past game, but they're starting to get more penetration in the run as well. Something Notre Dame's going to have to be able to do today. They're going to have to continue to stay with the run, but just find creative ways to, to get positive plays. 
Here's that look again, Drew, with Chris Tyree to the left and Kyron Williams, both backs in the game, same time. Cohn protected, throws, complete, first down, Braden Lindsey at the 46-yard line. Tenth catch of the year for the senior from Oregon. What do you do when your old line's struggling? You take your two backs and you keep them in and you just chip. Watch what these backs do to help solidify the protection. Allows Jack Cohn to step back comfortably. Find the free access throw, the off coverage to the field with Braden Lindsey. It was actually the pass they missed on third down in, on the first drive, or the second drive. But we're able to complete it there. No throws to Kevin Austin just yet. It's Williams trying to work across that line, but Cincinnati and Joel DeBlanco had uh, nothing of it. Joel DeBlanco, graduate student. A lot of those players on this team, a lot of players came back for one more year with Cincinnati. Third time they've run this play. Unfortunately, you don't really want to hand it off when you got seven defenders in the box and only five to block. That's a problem. So at some point, they're going to need to find a pass play off of that with one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. Cone swinging it at Williams in the open field. Couldn't have been away from Van Fossen. Ty Van Fossen who rotates in there with Deshaun Pace who had the interception on that last series. Either one does the job for UC. I don't, I don't, I don't fault that throw because you're throwing it to Kyron Williams quickly out in space in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You got to feel good about that even though Fossen was able to make the play that time. So third and long. Going back is Williams. Cincinnati brings three. Cone thought about taking off. It's to the wide side. Davis made one man miss in a second, but the rest of the Cincinnati defense is there to close it out. And it'll bring up fourth down. Wilson Huber, who had the fumble recovery earlier, comes in with the tackle. And we have an injured player for Cincinnati on the field. I believe it's Van Fossen. Who we talked about a moment ago made a good play on second down. Athletic training staff out to look at him. We come to this place to make your dream a reality. U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. Final preparations at Gillette Stadium today for tomorrow night. Tom Brady returns to play the Patriots and Bill Belichick. We'll be there. Tony Dungy's up there already. Drew and I heading there. Maria Taylor and Chris Sims will be handling all the highlights back in the studio. But football night in America on the road inside Gillette Stadium. When Brady comes out as a visitor for the first time, you'll see it on football night in America before Al, Chris, and Michelle. One of the most anticipated games in years in the NFL. Brady's return. Fourth and four, the Irish are going to go for it here, or at least line up to do so, with Cohn at quarterback. Cincinnati's got both linebackers walked up here right in the middle. Let's see if they pressure him or drop out. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage outside. Michael Mayer, the bottom of the screen here. I like this matchup. If you're going to throw it, here's your matchup right there. We're going to be a play. Play clock down at six. They're going to switch the formation, and there's no play. And the Cincinnati fans enjoy the fact that their defense did not jump, and they will kick the ball away. Delay game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Yeah, I was, I was questioning them going for it on fourth down right there. I, we're not in desperation football mode here. Unless you as a coach just said, hey, listen, if we're across the 50, and we're going for it every time this game. That's just the approach we're going to take because we're taking an aggressive mentality, and that's the message I want to send to the team. But the minute you get up there and you see Michael Mayer to the field, matched up one-on-one -on, -one on a safety, you have to love that matchup, especially with the leverage. He's playing outside technique. Throw a slant, throw anything inside that you want. Mayer gets you that first down. Ryan Montgomery back and awaits the Jay Bramley kick. Good blocking by the personal protectors, and it's caught the sixth long field for Cincinnati. Their quarterback, Desmond Ritter, he's won a lot of places. His offensive coordinator used to coach here. He told him it would be loud in South Bend, and this is what Ritter said when he heard that from his OC. 
Did Tim Brock give any tales about running South Bend back in the day or, or anything like that? Nah, just told me about the atmosphere. Told me it's going to be loud. I told him it shouldn't be loud for too long. When we say Denbrock, we mean Mike Denbrock, who was a longtime assistant at Notre Dame back in the early 2000s. And then with Brian Kelly, he's been with Brian Kelly for a long time. They are really good friends, Denbrock and Kelly. But Ritter's comments were heard by the Notre Dame players. And for the moment, it's loud, but it's the Cincinnati fans who are staying loud, too. They brought a lot of their own. 10 0 Bearcats lead. Run inside, and Jason Adami Lola will. Shut that down on Jerome Ford's first down carry. That's what you call bullets and board material, Mike. <laughs> Did that ever matter to you? You know what? Not really. Not for me. But uh, for some guys, it's it's whatever whatever extra motivation that you can that you can pin up there to get guys fired up. That's that's the job of the head coach. How can I get my team ready to play the best way I can? And the Irish players certainly were made aware of that comment from Ritter. Irish thought Cincinnati moved, no flag, and the pass complete as Ritter throws it. J.D. Bertrand with the tackle of Jordan Jones. Third down and a couple coming up. This would be a big stop for the Notre Dame defense here. I think they defended the run all day very, very well. It's a good point. Ford only has four carries for seven yards. You know this offense is totally driven by Desmond Ritter and his ability to throw the football. He's very good in the quick passing game, very good down the field. Here's a third and short. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Let's see if they can lock him down. Pressure comes to the Irish. Ritter is flushed. In his own goal line, he just throws it away. Smart experience play by a guy making his 39th start. Nothing he could do. And that was the Adam Lola brothers, Justin and Jason, chasing them down and forcing the punt unit off. Good job by this Notre Dame front. Again, everybody's pressuring here. Boom, they're hitting it, they're hitting it. Able to create, the, create those mismatches and those games, create leverage, spring guys free, forces Ritter outside the pocket. Good decision throwing it away. Got twin, bro twin brothers chasing after you there. <laughs> That's right. This makes this makes that decision to not go for on fourth down good because you've you've now just put the field right back into your favor. See if Kyron Williams can get a return here. Fletcher's kick is 39 yards. Williams fair catches at the 47. Irish will take over with their best field position of this first half. See if flag down. Let's see where is that flag. It is over in the Cincinnati bench area. Covered by Bearcats over there, so now we'll hear what it was. Doing the kick, holding, receiving team, number 11. 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Notre Dame. Is that Ramon Henderson, so it'll back up the Irish. Maybe not their best starting field position of the game. Marcus Freeman's defense has played well, even though they're down 10. Cincinnati scored 10 points in 97 seconds. Thanks to two Notre Dame turnovers, an interception and a muff kickoff. They had very little field to cover. They started one drive at the 8, one drive at the 17. Those are the 10 points of this game. Drew Pine, who was off the bench to spark the team in Chicago after Jack Cohen was hurt, remains there. We've seen Tyler Buckner for a couple of series. Jack Cohn has started, and after a good first drive, has not done much. Williams being strung out here and will not get anywhere as Pace is over to make yet another tackle as Notre Dame's run game has not gotten going. So after that first drive, neither quarterback has had an answer, so what to do? To me, this is a last chance opportunity for Jack Cohn. Uh, they've got great field position. Uh, they really need to go down and get some points here. And they need to show that this offense has a little bit of spark, has some efficiency, can move the football. If they're not able to do that here, I, I, I think you're forced to go with a guy like Drew Pine who created such a spark for you last week. I think the guys rally around him. At this point, you got to do something. Going from the 36, gets protected, fires a man on the sideline, incomplete. With coverage and a lot of battling there, but no flag. Brian Cook was in coverage, and both guys were jostling back and forth. 
You, you love these one-on-one -on -one matchups with, with Michael Mayer. It looks like he gets a little tangled up here. Otherwise, he's probably in a position to make a play here. But continue to throw the ball to Michael Mayer. He's your best matchup in many cases, although they have Sauce Gardner on him right here. Which <laughs> Luke, Luke Fickle ran out there to call timeout. Something he didn't like there. They look, they have 12 guys. They may have had one extra player out there. We're back in 30 seconds. Hey there, you getting some gas? I am the pump in the first ever Santa Fe plug-in hybrid EV. All right, trust your first instincts. There were 12 guys out there. Luke Fickle came running out because he was counting with you or somebody up in the box, maybe more importantly, you could see it. You'd see some confusion, and then you saw Jabari Taylor, big number 90, start heading off. So, one too many to avoid the penalty. They take the timeout, and that's what you were talking about. Notre Dame would be happy to live in that third and four, five, six region. Much different story than this. And these are tough situations to be in. Third and 11, it's when they can tune up the pass rush. You gotta hold the ball a little bit longer. Those backs were in. Cone throws in the middle. It's catch. a terrific catch by Avery Davis. He had to extend and stretch out on the fly. Brings it in for an Irish first down to the Cincinnati 41. Really nice job by Jack Cohn. Good protection up front, handling the games. Avery Davis able to get separation on that deep over route. Good trust and anticipation by Jack Cohn. Longest Irish offensive play of the day. The game was 23. Their name at the Cincinnati 41. Pressure comes, Cone retreats, gets rid of it, and ruled incomplete. Ed Linesman says incomplete. They're waiting on the whistle as it came out. That's a screenplay. So again, these two backs, right? You run Chris Tyree out of the backfield to try to pull the defender. You leak Kyron Williams across. It's a screenplay, right? Just ah, find a way to... Kyron Williams, just find a way to navigate through the line, create a window for the quarterback to throw it to you. Quarterback, you're going to have to retreat, retreat. Listen, you're going to get hit, you're going to get knocked down, but find a way to get the ball to the back to get a big play with blockers out front. And then you tell the referee that I was hit, my arm was hit when I was throwing. It shouldn't be intentional. So you, point, you point to the point to the running back. Cone throwing in the middle, incomplete from Mayer. He tried to jump it and throw it. Couldn't get to him, and as that pocket gets dirtier and dirtier, Cone having a tougher time with his accuracy. Curtis Brooks again. A couple of times he's messed things up up front. Watch this. It's empty. Empty five wide receivers. They only have a three-man rush. You can see Cincinnati checking. It's still this situation where you want to be able to get a completion. No Joe Wilkins, by the way. The receiver who caught a ball in the first quarter and took a shot to his right leg is out for the rest of the game. A third and ten. It's Cohn. Again the pressure, and he will go down. And Brooks meeted the quarterback, Darian Beavers, one more time. And his Cincinnati defense, after an opening drive, has really found a good rhythm. Darian Beavers, such a versatile player. He's an off-the-ball linebacker most of the time, but then they'll put him as a defensive end. Watch him just run around. Michael Carmody gets to Jack home before he has a chance to, to get a read down the field. We had our personnel hat on. We, we, we've got Beavers as a feature Raven or Steeler, like an outside linebacker, right? That's exactly right. <laughs> There's those body types that you see, and you just say, uh, yeah, that's a that's a 3-4 outside linebacker if I've ever seen one. Ravens and Steelers, they are best known for those 3-4 outside linebacker body types that are great pass rushers. They can drop in space. Just good <laughs> overall athletes. Into the end zone, touchback. Bearcats will take over the 20. Be right back. Train your mind. So. Three turnovers and a half for Notre Dame. First time since that disaster in South Florida against Miami back in the 2017 season. A 41 to 8 loss. Josh Luggan, this offensive line. You have to figure out something here because Cincinnati's controlling the game up front. Again, so much of this is what third, and, what third down situations are you in? If you're in third and ten and you're going to have to drop back and hold the ball, well, it's going to be a long day. Irish need a big play defensively. Cincinnati gets the ball to start the second half. So they'll try to score and get the ball back to start the third quarter. Design run with Ritter. 
Slides for five at the 25-yard line in front of Isaiah Foskey. Cincinnati two timeouts with about 40 to go. Such a versatile offense that they can run with Desmond Ritter. Obviously, he can throw the ball down the field. Great in the quick passing game, but he's designed quarterback draws. Obviously, the RPO game. Just all centers around his athletic ability, his decision making. Irish spring three. Ritter to the middle line, open for the tight end Leonard Taylor across midfield to Notre Dame territory at the 49-yard line. Pick up the 27. I love this. Just four verticals. You're reading the in two inside seam routes with single safety defense. Everybody runs that. Irish bring four. Ritter throws sideline. Cam Hart had a read on it. It's incomplete, intended for Jaden Thompson. I was actually just about to say, Mike, I don't think people run it enough. <laughs> Te teams should run four verticals out of two by two five times a game. And if nobody's open, take off and run or check it down to the back. But you get so many big play opportunities when you run four verts. Well, file that one away and don't run it again if you're Cincinnati. Cam Hart, who had two last week. Converted wide receiver was back in his wide receiver drill days. He was going to take that on the move. That's one thing about throws of the field. It's about 30, 30 yards to throw a hitch route out there. It's in the balls in the air a long time. Second and ten. Foskey comes late. His throw again is completed. It's Alec Pierce with a catch and run tackled by Bertrand at the 27-yard line. 54 seconds left. Well, Cincinnati's listening to us. We're talking about throwing more seam routes. Watch what Desmond Ritter does, though. Gives He's actually staring right at the seam route. I thought he gave a little pump outside, but a lot of times these seam routes are open in college football. 22 on that game. Ritter in a rhythm. Going to take a shot towards the end zone. Under throw the cut for the touchdown. Trey Tucker adjusts in the air. Beat Kyle Hamilton in coverage, and that's a rarity. And the Bearcats are up 16-0 in South Bend. If Desmond Ritter actually gets lucky that he underthrows this ball inside, Kyle Hamilton does a nice job in coverage, if you can see that. He gets his head around thinking the ball's going to be out front. The receiver actually sets him up a little bit. Falls back inside, makes the play. Great, great just me to you combination. Feel, back shoulder. You can tell Desmond Ritter has had a lot of time on task with these receivers. What a good looking like drive too, Drew. Minute eight. Walked it down the field, three completions, you see why. NFL scouts have great interest in Ritter. Bearcat fans making noise and having fun. They're up 17 nothing, and Mom loves it. Top 10 game in Athens was very one-sided. Not as much as this one right now, but on the State Farm Halftime Report, Jack Collinsworth, Corey Robinson will show you the highlights from that. Tim Layton will have his thoughts on Tom Brady's return to Foxborough, and we'll look at a first half that's going to leave Brian Kelly with some questions and decisions to make for the second half. Remember, Cincinnati gets the ball to start the second half. They are up 17 to nothing. Taken by Tyree from the two, up the middle, and Tyree with a good return out to the 33-yard line. Let's show you the 27-yard score to Trey Tucker. Yeah, I, I really, I really credit Trey Tucker on this route. Watch him, he beats Kyle Hamilton initially. Desmond Ritter tries to anticipate the throw, but he puts it in there for a long time, leaves it back shoulder. So what does Trey Tucker do? He sets up Kyle Hamilton. Kyle, Kyle Hamilton's one of the best coverage safeties in, in, in all of college football. He sets him up, comes back inside, catches the back shoulder. Really nice job by Trey Tucker. And this Cincinnati Bearcat team is rolling. The energy, the momentum, they can feel it. Notre Dame really needs to find a way to go down and get some points and try to seize back a little bit of that momentum on this drive. Yeah, 30, 35 seconds. You got two timeouts. Let's see what they can do. Jack Cohn just going to check it down here. Tyree out of the backfield. Did a good job to hang on to it as he's being flung down by Joel DeBlanco. A timeout taken by Notre Dame. They've won left 28 seconds until halftime. So the Irish had 69 yards on that opening drive that ended up with an interception. They have less than that since then. The ensuing five drives have not yielded much. And Luke Fickle, who 
was at Ohio State. Remember when everything went down and Jim Tressel resigned, Fickle had to take that job over in 2011 as the interim coach, 500 season, lost their bowl game. And then it looked like he was going to be on his way out. He went in for that interview, almost cursory kind of exit interview a bit with Urban Meyer when Urban was hired to become the head coach of Ohio State. And he ended up staying. He stayed for five years and really developed as a, a very good coach. So many good ties and roots going back to his days with John Cooper as a player. And then Jim Tressel, we mentioned earlier. One of his closest friends, his college roommate, Mike Vrabel, coach of the Tennessee Titans. Matter of fact, Fickle hosted Vrabel on Mike's recruiting visit. Vrabel always wanted to be a coach. Fickle thought he was crazy. And now Fickle's a heck of a coach like Vrabes is. Second and five. Now we have to check it down. It's deflected and incomplete. Ball was going forward when it was deflected, so they'll bring up third down. Going on the field is an incomplete pass intended for the Tyree. Obviously, Notre Dame's in a position where they need to push the ball down the field. They have one timeout. Interesting what they're doing with these two running backs. They've got both Chris Tyree and Kyron Williams in the game, standing back there right next to Jack Cohen. What are they doing? Their job is to chip, 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 and then get out on a little check down. Help this offensive line solidify inside, allow Jack Cohen to hold the ball, and maybe push it down the field a little bit. Third and five, Cohen trying to get out. He's throwing that away. An incomplete. Cincinnati's defense absolutely dominating the Notre Dame offense these last six drives. And Maje Sanders feeling himself here. There's plenty of game to go. He's going to hold that thought for a little bit. But they've got reason to crow here before halftime. Yeah, you're just you're, you're feeding the beast right now. You know, they've... They got 17 points on the board. Defense has come up with, with two big turnovers. You know, they took away points on the first drive from Notre Dame by intercepting them close to the goal line and then obviously set their offense up for a touchdown at the beginning of the second quarter. But they've been able to get after Jack Cohn. They're starting to stop the run. So they're really forcing Notre Dame into a one-dimensional situation where they're going to have to throw the ball. They're going to have to find a way to get completions and put together some drives. Great kick by Bramlett. It's down to the 10-yard line. It was touched, so... Cincinnati player could go back over and get it. Yeah, a little pushing and shoving leaves very little. So you, you mentioned it to me as soon as you were watching the game last week. When Drew Pine came in, there was energy and a, a different tempo to the Notre Dame offense. You think Brian Kelly's got to think about that move here at halftime? I think you have to. I think you absolutely have to put Drew Pine in the game to start the second half. And then, uh, does Tyler Buckner play a little bit? Maybe. Uh, he brings a great element with the run game. You know, Do you have a specific game plan in mind where Tyler Buckner is going to have an impact on this game, both running the football, maybe throwing the ball a little bit? But I think Drew Pine is more in a position to come out and start this game than Tyler Buckner is. And I certainly think you're in a position where you have to have a spark. you got to have a spark. Those cheers you hear are the Cincinnati fans who love the first 30 minutes. 17-0 Bearcats at the break. Jack Collinsworth and Corey Robinson State Farm Halftime Report coming up after this from your local station. Watching Notre Dame Football presented by Invesco QQQ. Notre Dame football presented by Invesco QQQ. Largest first half home deficit for the Irish in 14 years since the USC game in 2007. Look at the first half stats presented by Invesco QQQ. Those three turnovers, two of them back to back, turned into 10 points in 97 seconds. Cincinnati a late score. They're up 17 0. And here's the message from Brian Kelly to his team at halftime. You're evaluated for every snap that you play in this second half wearing a Notre Dame jersey. And you're gonna play it the right way or you're not gonna play. Period, end of discussion. To our standards that we've set with grit, attention to detail, smart, laser focus, and with an incredible attitude. If you do that, <laughs> good things will happen. Let's go play. Well, the Irish came out of the locker room to start the game. They had a good drive, 11 plays, 69 yards. But the ensuing six drives, 36 plays, just a total of 55 yards. And none of those uh, two quarterbacks that played could generate anything. And will we see Drew Pine 
the quarterback who came in in Chicago against Wisconsin in this second half. We'll have to wait for that answer. Cincinnati gets the ball to start this third quarter. And Drew, a lot of conversation about Desmond Ritter, the Cincinnati graduate student quarterback, NFL potential, leadership, all that stuff. What did you see as you watched him the first half? You know, I, I was really impressed with him. Uh, this offense totally revolves around him. His ability to throw the ball down the field, his ability to make good decisions, the quick passing game as well. You know, they... I know coming into this game, they really wanted to make more of a commitment to the run. I think Notre Dame's defensive line has a marked advantage against their offensive line, has done a good job stopping that run. So it's really going to force Desmond Ritter to continue to make plays in the passing game. When it's not there, tuck it, run it. The quarterback draws some of the RPO game. He's in a fortunate position here because he's up 17-0. So I don't think the pedal... He's being taken off the medal, but I, I think they still have to continue to attack. All right, Captain Tappen, what would you hear at halftime? Well, Mike, Luke Fickle told me at halftime that he was happy with his defense and the fact that they didn't give up the big plays. But he said, listen, this game is far from being over. That team over there, they put up 31 points in the fourth quarter last week. we got to keep it going. And Brian Kelly, when I asked him if there would be a decision made at quarterback, he said, no. Jack Cohn, we got a better we got to protect. Him better. We've had too many turnovers. He thought his defense played well except that last drive. He thought they were a little soft in the zone coverage, but he said, we've got to play to the level we are capable at. By the way, guys, that Cincinnati sideline has been electric since the start of this game. Yeah, KT, they came with confidence. Trey Tucker takes that little pop pass. He's on the move, and Tucker, with the touchdown at the end of the half, has a gain of eight to start this half. Yeah, I, I disagree with that about keeping Jack Cohen in the game. I think it's time to go with Drew Pine. I think you need a guy who can create a spark for your team. I think his ability to get the ball out of his hands, he has mobility, he can extend plays. Um, I think that that's just the way to go at this point in the game. You're down 17-0. You you've shown no signs of being able to stay in the pocket and throw the ball. I think you need to do something different. Seven for Tucker on the first down play. The run for Ford. He'll seek space, get the first down as he'll gain six yards out to the 38-yard line. Cincinnati had 30 plays in that first half for 150 yards. So it's not as though they were a house of fire offensively. Really, most of what they did came on that last drive. Five plays and 80 yards to take it to a three-score lead. You know, it's funny what tempo will do for an offense. You know, that was a two-minute drive situation. Up until that point, I thought Notre Dame's defense had done a great job. They were getting two short fields, which resulted in those 10 points. From the 38, Ritter protected. Shot play downfield. Man with a step. And it's caught. Pierce, who's the shot play guy, goes up to get it. And he'll have it at the 17-yard line. Really nice job by, here by the receiver. Good good at the release point. He's got three steps on him. But this is what I love to see from wide receivers. Free safety is on a beeline over there. He jumps up, sacrifices his body. He knows he's probably going to get hit. He goes to high point the ball. He's in a better position to catch it than the other two defenders. Really nice play by Pierce. Longest reception of the year for Pierce. It was 45 yards. Ritter's hit his last five. And Cincinnati's back in the red zone. Three to the right. Ritter taking off left, and Drew White will bring him down right around the original line of scrimmage. Notre Dame a little confused. Looked like with their free safety coming out of the middle of the field, still were able to get everything defended, but again, Desmond Ritter, good decision maker. He's not going to force the ball, especially in this situation when you've got a lead like you do. And he's a good enough athlete that... If he can find a seam, he can be electric in the run game as well. We love loading these two tight ends over to the same side. They are over to the right. A lot of big folks over here. Ford runs. And Jerome will go to the 12-yard line. I mentioned it when Cincinnati got the ball before their two-minute drive to score. To make it 17-0. We're going up to see Belichick and Brady tomorrow. I always call it the full Belichick. When you score before halftime, you hit halftime, you get the ball, and you come out and score right again. It seems like New England did that so often to teams. It's such a game changer when that happens. And Cincinnati's in position, if they can get a touchdown here, to really do that and make it a massive mountain for the Irish to climb. You know, it happened on the Sunday night game last week. 49ers yes. with the uh, Packers. That's right. Aaron Rodgers ends up sitting on the bench for 40 minutes, and he, the Niners scored 14 points in that period of time. From the 12, five receivers out 
there. The pass is up in the air and incomplete. A lot of grabbing there as he tried to get it to Leonard Taylor. J.T. Bertrand, J.D. Bertrand, excuse me, in coverage. And Fickle will send the field goal unit out. So he's got his matchup right here. Big tight end. Throw it up. Just misses the throw a little bit. He's lucky that doesn't get intercepted. A little bit of a risky throw. But good job by the Irish. Hey, they give up the big play early in the drive. Find a way to stop them. If, if they can make Cincinnati kick field goals, that's a huge positive. It is. Cole Smith is good from 23. He has been shaky during his career. He's made just over half of his field goals. This from 30 is no good. So the shakiness of the kicker hurts the Bearcats there. Irish dodge a huge opportunity for Cincinnati. Beautiful drive downfield. The big play to the big play receiver, Pierce. They're in easy field goal range. And Smith missed it. How's that? Mike's a sub above. For the Black Cats, that's what they like to call the Cincinnati defense. Marcus Freeman, the coordinator now at Notre Dame, had this unit going for the last four years. This is what they did last year, that terrific run, the 9-1 and one season, ending in a three-point Peach Bowl loss to number nine, Georgia. This year, continuing strong pressure rate, as we've seen again in this game, only allowing four yards per play and 15 points per game. And there are the numbers on top of that here today. They have uh, kept the Irish after that first drive. In check. Now, who will be the quarterback option for the Irish? It will be Drew Pine. So uh, as you were kind of leaning towards Drew, Drew Pine, sophomore from New Canaan, Connecticut, comes in, grew up a Notre Dame fan. He wears 10 because of Brady Quinn. Came into the Wisconsin game when Cohn was hurt and Buckner was not available last week and was 6 of 8 and threw a touchdown. From the 20-yard line, he'll start with a give up the middle, stumbling through for five. It's Kyron Williams to the 25-yard line. So what is it that you saw about Drew Pine that you liked from a quarterback's eye to a quarterback's play? Well, first off, he's 5'11", so he's part of the six-foot Thunder Club. <laughs> there so that's why I love him. But you know what? I, listen, it's Moxie. It's Moxie. He's got a little gunslinger mentality. He's getting the ball out of his hands. He's a great athlete. He's got mobility. And honestly, watch the sideline. When this guy came in the game last week, and they were jumping up and down. The fans loved it like they rallied. They rallied. This guy got, gave him some juice. Can he perform in a big spot here with the pressure on it? Trying to establish a run. It's a good job by Williams to get outside. And Kyron Williams with an eight-yard run and a first down. Here's the other thing about Drew Pine. Different than Jack Cohn. Jack, uh, Drew Pine's a run threat. He's a great athlete. So the run game becomes a little bit different. The RPO game becomes a little bit different because he can pull it and take off and run. So it's not this... Jack Cohn, the passer, Tyler Buckner, the runner mentality with the two quarterbacks. It's now a guy who has the versatility to do both. Pine, New Canaan, Connecticut. He was established early on as a quarterback. He could do it in high school. Four-star was offered by a lot of the big schools in his freshman year. Won a state championship in Connecticut. From the 33-yard line and out of the gun. Pine will look. And his throw into traffic is incomplete. Avery Davis was the intended receiver. And Javon Hicks, the safety, was in coverage. They go max protection, leave two tight ends in. It's man-to-man -man coverage outside. That's when you really want to take some shots. And again, the in interior of the field here. Listen, Cincinnati's got two really good corners. These are NFL caliber corners. I wouldn't be attacking these guys. I'd be coming inside, tight end matchups, slot receiver matchups, running back matchups. But just find some completions. Get some positive plays. Get some first downs. Second and ten. He will throw. The crosser's Michael Mills. Got a first down. And to the 48-yard line. 15 to Notre Dame's outstanding tight end. Good in the opening drive. Quiet sits. This is what Drew Pine did a great job of last week. Just getting the ball out of his hands, finding these underneath routes, getting into the hands of your playmakers, allowing them to get yards after the catch. You cannot throw the ball to Michael Mayer enough in the second half of this game. Five for 47 for Mayer so far, leading Irish receiver. He's got 29 catches in the first four and a half games. Pressure comes. Pine gets rid of it to the long side. It's Kevin Austin for the first time today. 
to the 35-yard line. First down for Austin in a gain of 17. This is where you want to keep the tempo going. Tyler Buckner's now coming in the game. Let's see what they continue to do with the game planning for him. I feel like you've got, you've got a good thing going with Drew Pine right now, but Tyler Buckner, we know they want to continue to develop this guy. He's got tremendous upside. He's been a huge part of their run game. Let's see how this game plan evolves with him at quarterback. Throw two tight ends over there. George Takis with Michael Mayer. Buckner, a run threat. He and Williams kind of running in almost the same place. It was a very last-second decision to keep it. And some of the fans are frustrated. They're like waving arms like, put 10 back in. And they do. Pine returns. And I get it. I get what you're saying that you, you want Buckner because it throws the defense off a little bit. It's a different look. You got to scramble. And I think he wants to mix quarterbacks. He just had two good plays back to back. To me, the frustration. To me, Pine does both. Pine, Pine's your passer and your runner. He, he's a great combination of both because of his versatility. Deion Colsey, the freshman in it wide receiver, bottom of your screen. The 35, here is Pine. Getting out of the pocket, taking off, and gets five to the 30. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. This, is, this is what Drew Pine gives you. When there's nobody open, he has the athleticism, the speed, the awareness to get out of the pocket. And instead of taking a sack here, instead of throwing the ball away here, you get a five-yard gain. So instead of third and ten, Mike, we're sitting here at third and five. You had a lot of play calls, third and five. Man coverage, find your best matchup. I like Michael Mayer right here. He's a matchup. I don't know if I'd be going down towards Sauce Gardner here at the bottom of the screen. But certainly Avery Avery Davis like that matchup. Michael Mayer like that matchup. Cincinnati saw all your circle and said, "I'm going to take a timeout." Let's see what Mike Tressel does defensively. Timeout, Cincinnati. They're perfect. This is a place for ambition. How about this? Two plays ago. Drew Pine lines up. He's assessing the coverage. His eyes are up. He doesn't realize he's behind the left guard. <laughs> Love That's it. the center. Love it. He realizes it. Nice little <laughs> shimmy here to the right. But, see, that's one that you come back and win this game, and then you're in the quarterback room tomorrow, uh -huh. and they pause it and have a nice laugh <laughs> at your expense for about five minutes. Third and five here. I think he's lined up on the left hash. It's 52 in there. But we did see when we looked at that, 76, Joe Alt is in the game at left tackle for the Irish. That's a fourth left tackle they played this year. Here's Pye throwing that slot incomplete, intended for Mayer. The tight coverage from Javon Hicks, who has done a good job when involved in coverage here today. Let's see what the Irish will do on fourth and five from the 30. And we'll eschew the 48-yard field goal for Jonathan Doerr. And go for it. Yeah, I think with that situation in the game, you're down 17 points. You really would like to continue this drive and score seven. Fourth and five, that's manageable. We'll look over again and let's see if Cincinnati will switch defenses or stay. Looks like you're getting zone coverage from Cincinnati. They bring three. Pine throws to the wide side. Incomplete. There was a little confusion on the route there. Don't know if it was the quarterback who was about to get hit or the receiver. Notre Dame turns it over on down to this Cincinnati defense. Pitching a shutout for the first 37 minutes So this one. Here's what happened on that fourth down play. The receiver is reading the corner. If the corner is soft with no safety help over the top, he's gonna run a speed out. But if this corner is a cloud corner with a safety help over the top, which is what it was, he'll convert it to a fade. That's what he did. Drew Pine thought he was running the out. Miscommunication there. Plus, Majay Sanders is continuing to, to, to bring heat, pushing the tackle back into the lap of Drew Pine, making that a tough throw. And all that leads to Notre Dame turning it over on downs after nine plays and 50 yards. Second possession of the half for Ritter in Cincinnati begins with a seven-yard catch to Alec Pierce, who's having a very good ball game for the Bearcats here in South Bend.
looks like Cincinnati's trying to speed up the tempo here on Notre Dame's defense. Getting some no huddle. Similar to what they did at the end of the first half with the two minute yep. drill. They probably like that tempo against the Notre Dame defense. The best their offense look. Pierce has five catches for 100 yards. It's 100 of the Cincinnati 220 in the first two and a half quarters. From the 37, the run for Ford through the hole into the 44, gain a seven and a first down for Jerome Ford, the junior from Tampa. They came in with the intention of getting him going a little bit more. Seven carries and 25 yards so far, Catherine. Yeah, well, Jerome Ford told me today after two years in Alabama, he said he learned to handle his business, to treat everything like a pro. He said from school to football, the way I carry myself off the field, it matters. He said it was also one of the big reasons that he transferred to Cincinnati was because he wanted that family atmosphere that Coach Luke Fickle has created. He said, I can pretty much go to Coach Fick for anything at any time, and we're seeing his improvement on the field as well, Mike. Right. You told us, KT, what the coaches told us. He's kind of a quiet kid, goes about his business, but I mean, he's all business. Design run here with Ritter to the left side for about three yards. You know, transfer portal, guys jump in and transfer all the time. But Alabama, sometimes you just need an opportunity. Look at the running backs who are on this Alabama team three years ago. Ford, Najee Harris, who we're seeing in the league, Josh Jacobs, Damian. And Harris pretty good. I wonder why Alabama's so good every year. <laughs> they just, they just, I mean, it's a factory. They, they grow them on trees down there. Just cranking out like three or four NFL caliber backs. The Cincinnati really hasn't grown a lot and dipped a lot into the transfer portal. Luke Fickle, not a fan of that, but knowing opportunities when guys leave, he'll seize that moment. Again, a design run with Ritter to the edge, escorted to the sideline by DJ Brown. Just shy of that first down marker in Notre Dame territory at the 47. You know, Desmond Ritter showing his athleticism there. That, that wasn't like a toss crack. There, there wasn't anybody really out on the edge blocking for him. It was just, hey, our guy's faster than your guy. And we're just going to run him out there on his own and, and let him go get nine yards. Ritter's been a 500 a year rushing guy. You see his career numbers. Since he two of eight converting third downs today. Where Notre Dame has a lot of defenders here in and around the line of scrimmage. Think about one of these one-on-one -on -one matchups outside if you do want to throw it. Forward inside. He's going to be stopped very close to the line. The mark is going to be short. And we're going to have a fourth down decision from one of the hot names in college football coaching, Luke Fickle. Yeah, this is this is when the, the competitor in you says, ah, oh, we're going to go for it, we're going to get it, you know, and... Man, you're up 17 points. Your defense is playing lights out. If you punt the ball, you probably punt him inside the 10-yard line. But Ritter, keeper. And it looks like he got it. Just had to break the 45, and he did. A lot of bodies, a lot of physical, a lot of nasty, but it's a first down. You see the conversation on the left side of your screen there. And Josh Wiley's block ended up. Continuing well, on. I'll tell you what the problem is. I mean, you only got two guys in there. But get lined up, get your four point stances, and, and get ready to defend the sneak. The minute that they came running out, you felt like that's exactly what was going to happen. But Notre Dame's got to be on top of it. They got to be ready for that. First down picked up by Cincinnati. They have 10. Notre Dame has picked up 12. At the 45, Ford runs into Drew White. Tackle the couple. They are taking more of a run attack here since he only ran for 27 yards in the first half. This drive, they're just over 30 with that carry. So I love this program, what Luke Fickle has built. And you start thinking about it, even back to Rick Minter, built a good program at Cincinnati. Not, not an elite program, but good. Brian Kelly, an exceptional job. A couple of big bowl games, 34-6 and six run. Mark D'Antonio came in and did a good job at Cincinnati. Then went to Michigan State. Did not go well with Tommy Tuberville, but Fickle has really got it back together. This pass complete. First down to the 25-yard line to Michael Young Jr. The Notre Dame transfer. Tackled by Clarence Lewis. And the Bearcats on the move again. Watch this route by Michael Young. Right here. Man, we're just going to come up. We're going to shake this guy. Break out. I mean, that's just a simple stick route. But you catch it for four or five yards, and then you get about 15 yards run after the catch. I've seen a lot of this today from, from the Cincinnati offense. They've, they've taken really two shots in this game, and both of them were effective. 
But other than that, it's just been think and dunk, run the football, control the clock. They have been the better team here today. Ritter, in trouble, first game to fumble. That's a live ball, Drew White's on it for the Irish. He's going to scoop and try to score. He's got two blockers. White taken down at the 37-yard line. Desperate for a turnover. If it's confirmed, the Irish have their Ritter first game. The Recovered by Notre Dame. Watch Isaiah Fosky here on the right side. Right here, he's just going to run right around the tackle. Desmond Ritter feels him. They're trying to work a double move. So Desmond Ritter pumps and loses track of that pass rush. A huge play, a huge play for the Notre Dame defense. Clearly a fumble. White scooped it. Nice return. Notre Dame has its best field position of the day at the Cincinnati 38-yard line. My name's John Stewart. I've been away from Talladega tomorrow on NBC. Our aerial coverage is brought to you by Geico. And it's a great look, too. You see the red of the Cincinnati fans, the green of the Notre Dame fans. 17-0. Isaiah Foskey caused it. Drew White returned it for Notre Dame. And now Drew Pine and the Irish offense will take over at the 38-yard line. If you're just tuning over, Pine coming in, start of the third quarter. Jack Cohn ineffective in the first half. They put it in the hands of Avery Davis with a couple of blockers ahead. Davis to the 30, gain of eight on first down. Here's how the Irish got the ball in good field position. Yeah, so they're on the red zone fringe, which is an area where you like to take shots. They run some sort of a double move here with the receiver. Okay, that's fine. It's not open, but there's no outlet. Typically, you'd have a shallow cross, back getting out. He gets eaten up in protection, but nowhere for the quarterback to dump this ball. I don't know where he's going to throw this ball, but the, the last thing that can happen in that situation is a turnover. Second and two, Pine looks to throw for it, Mayer is free. Michael Mayer, first down Irish at the 14-yard line. Give him 16 on that one. The Irish inside the red zone for the second time today. Mike, I, I, I love these passes because honestly, it doesn't matter what happens up here if you take one, two, three and get the ball out of your hands. And that's something I think Drew Pine adds to this offense. It's an element of getting the ball out of your hands, get it into your playmaker's hands, and then yards after the catch. He's hit Michael Mayer on two five-yard routes here over the last two drives, and Michael Mayer has gone and extended that to a 15-20 yard gain each time. So Ritter and company were 17 nothing. not the best design of play, contributing in part to the turnover. The Irish try to make them pay. Pine surveys, stays alive, on the move, taking off, Pine at the five. First down for Drew Pine, inside the five. The mark him at the two. So this is a play that Notre Dame ran on their very first series. They run Kyron Williams out to extend it. Here's Michael Mayer. He's not open. So what does Drew Pine do? All right, I'm going to extend the play. Nobody's open. Take off and run. Nice job extending the play by Drew Pine. We put the ball to three. I watch him play, and it feels bookish. It feels very much like watching Ian Book, 30 wins, all-time leader. Pine spent as much time as possible with Book all of last year. Bounced by Kyron Williams. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Notre Dame touchdown, Kyron Williams. This was Notre Dame's favorite run play last year with that power offensive line. Everyone's down, down, down. It's requiring then Kyron Williams to make one man miss. And I would bet on Kyron Williams in space just about every time. For Williams, rushing touchdown number three on the year. Took 43 minutes and 41 seconds. And Drew Pine comes in like he did last week against Wisconsin. And the offense looks different. Different tempo, different juice to it. Jonathan Doerr. On for the extra point. 17-7. So the Irish are on the board with a buck 19 left here in this third quarter. Well, the offensive line much maligned. 
Good job on that drive. Joe Alt, the freshman, part of it, 76 there, Catherine. Yeah, and you know, you see Kyron Williams going over there and thanking his offensive line. I asked left guard Zeke Carell this week about that. He said it's so rewarding to know that your teammates acknowledge your work. And that goes back to just being able to trust that we're going to do our jobs, so that he can go up and rip a big play open. And when you see it all come together with the guys next to you and the fruition of your hard work after practicing all week long, he said it's just so rewarding. It's kind of staying with it, right? In adversity, staying with it. And Williams talking to his guys. And Drew Pine talking with Tyler Buckner and Jack Cohen. You see the smile on Cohen's face. This illustrates what we said before. It's a very tight quarterback room. Brian Kelly said it really well. You know, Cohen comes in from Wisconsin, grad student. Buckner, big recruit from Southern California. Pine's the guy who's been in the system. In this day and age, most guys would have been in the transfer portal in three minutes. Kelly said, Drew Pine's a great example of how we do business in our program. He didn't put his name in the portal. He stayed here. Look at the Wisconsin game, and look at this game. He has paid dividends for return. Touchback, Cincinnati will have a long field. When we take a look at the quarterback comparison, brought to you by Under Armour. We just have one team quarterback comparison. It's Notre Dame gives you a whole boatload here. Here are the numbers for Cohen. A good first drive, struggled after that. Buckner has been limited in his really two series play here in the third quarter. And you see the numbers from Pot. There's no doubt with Drew Pine in the, in, in, at the helm that he gives you the full array of this offense with just one guy. He, he has the ability to execute the RPO game. He does a great job of, of knowing where to throw the football, knowing where to put his eyes, get the ball out on time. And then when there's nothing there, he can scramble and make plays. 25, Ford with the run, tries to squirt through. He's got three on that one to the 28-yard line as we get to the back end of the third. Cincinnati ran it well on this last drive. Let's see what they will do here, trying to hang on to a 10-point lead. This is a big drive in this game. I, I like the way Cincinnati's executing their offense right now. Mm -hmm. That last drive was really good up until the turnover. It was, it was actually a steady dose of the run game, just short, quick completions, not taking any negative plays. Trying to snap Notre Dame's 26-game home winning streak, second longest in the country. Second and seven, Ritter swings it out, Ford, bang down, Cam Hart, third down coming up. So Ritter said it'll get quiet here quick, and it was quiet for a while, he was right. Watch right. Cam Hart right here. Hey, you're at the field, eyes on the quarterback. Man, you see that ball being thrown to the bubble? Go blow it up for a negative play. That's a big play on this drive. And it's not quiet now. Cincinnati's going to pull the plug on the noise and end the quarter. Off we go to the fourth quarter. Can Cincinnati get the biggest win in program history? They lead by 10. And we're back at Notre Dame Stadium after this message from your local station. Big fourth quarter coming up. You're watching Notre Dame Football presented by Invesco QQQ. What happens when an un- ...four on Instagram. A look at the score by quarter. Brought to you by Invesco QQQ. A look at Notre Dame Stadium getting loud. Fourth quarter begins. Mike Tirico, Drew Brees, Catherine Tappen, 17-7. Cincy the first 17. Notre Dame the seven in this second half. We start this half with a big play. Third and 11 for the Bearcats. Harris bringing six. Foskey the late hit. The pass by Ritter is incomplete. Good pressure package dialed up. Cincinnati will punch it away. Watch, watch Foskey's right hand right here. Watch him get off, outside rush, and knock that outside hand of the tackle down. Get to the quarterback. Nice little pass rush variation from Isaiah Foskey. Two big plays. One forced turnover. One get the offense off the field. The punt by Mason Fletcher. Line drive. Kyron Williams had a back up and catch it over his head. Not in a lot of momentum, but he made two men miss and run it out to the 42. However, there's a flag down back at the 32 where that springing block was thrown. That is the second special teams penalty on Ramon Henderson. Number return, personal foul, illegal blindside block. Number 11 from the receiving team. 
15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Notre Dame. He's going to take it all the way back to the 17 yard line. Watch this block right here. A couple things wrong there. Number one, you can't blindside block him. Number two, you can't hit him in the back. So it's one of those where you just have to use your best judgment. So long field for the Irish. Want to get you to the progressive game flow. Those of you who have been watching that Alabama blowout just tuned over. We've got a competitive game here. Opening drive by the Irish. Good defensive pressure. Sauce Gardner, the pick. It set up Cincinnati. Desmond Ritter, their quarterback. 50% completions. He's had a good game. Notre Dame, 26 straight home wins. Shut out at home in the first half. For the first time in 14 years. Battling back here. They scored in their last drive. They played three quarterbacks. They pulled Jack Cohn. Drew Pine is in, and the Irish are trying to get a score to make it a one-score game. Long field to deal with, though, this time. Second throw is way too hot and into traffic, incomplete. Intended for Braden Lindsay, who was crossing. They had both Kyron Williams and Chris Tyree in the backfield again. That's been a big part of their game plan. This game is get two of their better players on the field, help with pass protection, free release out of the backfield with opportunities to catch the ball in space as well. Mayor three in from the top. The Irish hot receiver, Pine looking that way. Getting protection here. It's only a three-man rush. Can he find somebody open? Yes, he can. He's dropped by Kevin Austin. Boy, they rushed three. They couldn't cover all that time. They had a chance for a big play around the 40, and Austin couldn't reel it in. How about the protection from this offensive line? It's only a three-man rush. But nice job holding up there. MyJ Sanders continues to work, but this is just one of those plays you got to make. And now third and ten, the Cincinnati defense loves these situations. They bring exotic pressures, different looks. Three with a spy, Pine throws, it's incomplete. It was challenged by Kobe Bryant, the corner intended for Avery Davis. And the Cincinnati defense, the core and foundation of this team, comes up big when they needed it. So actually watch Michael Mayer, he's, he's open in the middle of the field, that's really your first progression. And then Avery Davis outside on this outside hook. Corner sitting on his back, able to just to reach in front and knock the ball down. Jay Bramley kicks to Ryan Montgomery. Big rush. Got it away with good hang time as well. 46 yards, big hit by Kyle Hamilton. Legal and Montgomery does an exceptional job of hanging on to that ball. A lot of hang time. He chose not to fair catch it. Hamilton got his hand in the way, but he made him pay. Bearcats could take over the 36. Hamilton, the gunner, with a big play after Bramlett's good kick. Guinness and Notre Dame. Game good. Gillette. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Invesco QQQ, the official ETF of the NCAA. And by Jersey Mike's Subs, be a sub above. Travis Kelsey, one of the UC all-timers. He's a terrific college player, terrific in the NFL, don't play the Eagles. But he's not as good as the two guys before him. Oscar Robertson was all-time kind of good. Average triple doubles for an entire season. And of course, Sandy Koufax might be the greatest pitcher of all time. Cincinnati knows some good sports. This might be their biggest football win. The 14 minutes away from it. Leading by 10, they'll have first and 15. False start on their tight end, Wiley. Right. Offense, number 81. Five-yard penalty, first down. Luke Fickle's name it will come up a lot. The USC opening, obviously drawing attention because Mike Bone, the athletic director at Southern California, was the one who was the athletic director when Fickle was hired to replace now U.S. Senator Tommy Tuberville at Cincinnati. Fickle's an Ohio guy. He loves it. He loves the Ohio area, Cincinnati in general. And he's built a team that could make a playoff appearance. Still got to get through this. Ritter, shot. Pierce open. Got it. Down the sideline. Another big play to Alec Pierce. 
third one of the day. Takes it all the way to the Irish 25. This is the second time just on a pure go route where Pierce gets a great release. Gets the DB by two steps. Really nicely thrown ball by Desmond Ritter. Listen, when you play, when you play bump and run, you've got to be able to defend against those go routes. He's allowed Alex, Alex Pierce outside twice now. I start thinking about outside technique. Don't let him go outside. If he does, just push him out of bounds. Otherwise, funnel him inside to your free safety. Pierce had 150 receiving yards coming in. He's got 144 today. And 25. High snap. Four games two. Jason Adami Lolo with the tackle. I really like the way this, this defensive line is playing right now for Notre Dame. Both in the run game and in the pass game, they're stout. I think they feel like they've got the advantage up there. You see these linebackers, too, on every play. They've got one of them hitting. It's Drew White. It's J.D. Bertrand. They're hitting these interior gaps, forcing some of these runs to have to bounce into these strong defensive ends that they've got. Cincinnati score. Touchdown here. Touchdown. Might put this one... Too far for the Irish to get back in. Huge series. Ritter clutches, throws. As is tight end Wiley to the 20-yard line. We have third and a oh, short four coming up. Or short five, I should say. That's a good completion. Gets you to third and five. Cincinnati's looking to the sideline, trying to get a signal here. I think if you're Notre Dame here, this is a huge stop. You gotta find a way. Probably playing man-to-man. -man. You're just locking up outside. You're going to bring some interior pressure. Try to force Ritter to get this ball out of his hands or vacate the pocket. Third and four. They're going to run it with Ford, and he will be stopped. Back-to-back, -back, Jason Adam Lola with good plays. So after that shaky field goal earlier, it's 17-7. He got, he got to try to kick it here. You would think so, Mike. But watch this here. Just inside zone run play. A lot of movement up front with the Notre Dame defensive line. That's a good stop for them. Strong leg for Cole Smith. One of two on the day. 16 of 30 on his career. Just inside the right hash. A little more comfortable for his ball that turns right to left. Take a 13 point lead. Bad snap. Missed it. The snap was behind. It was a nice job by Bryce Burton to get it down. But if you want to be a championship program, you've got to make short field goals. Instead of a 16 point game, this is 10. It's the whole operation. It wasn't a perfect snap, but it wasn't too bad. Holder did a nice job getting it down. Smith missed it. Irish dodge another one. 10-point game with 11.28 left in regulation. Well, that's the thing about claims, you see. They can be CSN. It's getting tight. It's playoff time. Second round of the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs continue. Oh, man, you talk about playoff pressure and Talladega on top of it. It's going to be some fun. Tomorrow, 2 Eastern on NBC. Whittling down from 12 to 8, and they'll get down to 4, and it'll be decided in about five weeks in Phoenix. So a couple of field goal misses for Cincinnati. Have the Irish still within 10. 11.28 to go. Drew Pine started hot when he came in in this third quarter, but he's only hit one of his last six attempts. Irish offense has been devoid of big plays today. 23, their longest game of the afternoon. Line from the 20, in the hands of Kyron Williams, looking for a cutback lane. And there was none. Only a yard or two. Ty Van Fossen injured in the first half, back in there, along with Joel DeBlanco, the two linebackers. That's a big drive here for Notre Dame. Looks like they're trying to get a little bit of tempo going. Look to the sideline for the play call this time. 76, Joe Alt remains in at left tackle for the Irish. Michael Carmody started. Alt, the freshman. Pine hit as he throws. Off the hand. 
hands of Kevin Austin and incomplete. He was pressured. He got it in there. Not sure if Sauce Gardner got a hand in there, but it was incomplete. And we have third down coming up. Let's watch Sauce Gardner here. He's into the boundary. He's locked up with the receiver. Tracking him across the field. See that left hand? Just kind of tugging on the jersey. That's a, that's a veteran move there. That's an NFL-type DB move. Where right when the ball is thrown, though, you let go. So when eyes come to you, they don't see the tug. It was really nice coverage by Sauce Gardner. They're now coming up Deion Colsey again. 16, the freshman is in there. Blanketed by Sauce. Wide side fire. Caught for the first down. That's another freshman. Lorenzo Stiles Jr. So big spot in the game. And two freshmen played very few snaps in the Irish on the field of receiver and pick up a first down. That's a good quick rhythm pass here by Drew Pine. One, two, three. Quick catch. Get out of your hands. They're having to rely on everyone in this game. Lorenzo Stiles to the field. That's a long throw. Good accurate throw. Putting his hands in position to go get run after the catch. Colsey and Styles had only played 26 combined snaps in the first four games. Out here in a big spot, Pine is pressured. In trouble. He got away on the move. Is anybody coming with him? Late across his body and incomplete for Davis. Javon Hicks couldn't get to it. Second down coming up. Kyron Williams does so much for this offense. Watch him come across the line of scrimmage here to pick up this nickel pressure. So that, that, nickel, that nickel thinks he's about to run over you, and you go ahead and take, take his legs out. Allows Drew Pine to get outside the pocket to that right side and extend that play. Approaching 10 minutes left. Drew Pine never put that mouth guard back in his mouth. He chews on it, chews on it. That's, I don't even know if it ever gets in there. It's, it's, the, Steph, it's the Steph Curry uh, <laughs> technique. Chris Tyree with the run. For about five to the 41 yard line. I'll never forget the last game Ian Book played in here against Syracuse last year. And we were talking to Ian about what's going to happen in the future of the quarterbacks. We were talking about Drew Pine because we thought it was going to be a lopsided game. Pine would get in. And he said, Drew Pine follows me everywhere. And the guys really respond to him. He's watching film with me. He'll send me text. Remember, Ian told us he sent me a really nice text like, thank you for all that you've been to me and all you've helped me do during my time. You're a very thoughtful guy. Teammates love him. They went to Moore now. He threw it to Mayer. Mayer may have gotten hurt as he goes to the 40-yard line. Came up Gippy after that 19-yard catch. Let's hope not. He's going to be a big part of this comeback here. Watch him on this play. It's just man-to-man. He's oh, watch him shake the point player there. Foot in the ground. Get separation. This guy is a ball player. That, that looks like that might be some sort of a muscle, muscle tweak. Seven catches from there, 83 yards. Brian Kelly's going to make sure that he gets checked out. It's a big game. It's a big moment. But that guy's got a lot ahead of for him this year and beyond. Nine minutes left, 39-yard line. The Irish down a couple of their experienced pass catchers. Pine throws again. Lindsey is there. Caught it for the 32. That's seven on first down. Kobe Bryant, the coverage. If I'm Notre Dame, I'm continuing to attack the field. Attack the field. They've been able to complete a lot of balls out there. And it's short, intermediate stuff, but the yards after the catch have been pretty significant at times. And it's just continuing to get first downs and, and move the ball. You've got yourself in a really good position here. you got to remember when you're down here, at some point you're going to need the field goal also. You're running out of possession, so that's part of the equation here. They want it all. He's going for it all. Lindsey's down there, fighting for it. Lindsey! Keep attacking the field, right? They've run a couple short routes. Well, let's take a shot right now. Get your speedster out there, Braden Lindsay. And this is just a great play by the receiver. Ball's under thrown a little bit, off and outside. That's okay. Put yourself in a position where you can adjust. Back shoulder, secure the catch. Notre Dame needed that play. Great job by both. Jonathan Doerr for the extra point to make it a three-point game. it left never saw the laces on the hole a huge miss because now the Irish need a touchdown big miss there
They were 0 for 6 on the deep balls to Braden Lindsay. Had not hit one. But they finally do. Drew Pine has led them back. But the lead is still 4. Got direct TV stream. Now we can watch live TV. It's yo! <laughs> South Bend on this overcast Saturday. Our aerial coverage is brought to you by the Geico. 17-13, not 14. Jonathan Doerr missed the extra point. He missed his first in his Notre Dame career back in 2018 against Navy. He was the backup kicker then to Justin Yoon. He made 127 in a row until the last one that he just missed. So the Irish will need a touchdown instead of a field goal. In this one, it's a touchback here. Cincinnati will take over with a long field. What's one of the things that makes Desmond Ritter so good? This is something that he's worked on all offseason. This fluid drop in the shotgun and this nice, quiet upper body with level eyes. So what does that do? Your legs are doing all the work as you drop back, but your upper body is quiet. You're always in a position to throw. Your eyes are level. That's going to help you be accurate and deliver the ball on time with accuracy and balance. Desmond Ritter has continued to position himself into being an NFL-ready type quarterback. Went out to do work with Jordan Palmer this year. Said, hey, why don't you stay balanced like, it, like you're in a pool with no waves. There are waves of noise raining down on Ritter and the Bearcat offense now. Here comes Notre Dame pressure. Ritter throws behind it complete. Gain of five yards to the former Irish receiver Michael Young. He's had a nice return to South Bend. Notre Dame is doing a good job with their pressure. They bring six there, but with off coverage, it just makes it a nice, easy completion for Desmond Ritter. Good job recognizing it, getting the ball out of your hands quickly for a positive play. This guy's threatening. Radar looks like we'll get to the end of this one without precipitation. Second and five, four. Good move around Bertrand and into the open field for a gain of 20 and a first down. Best run of the day for Jerome Ford. Big first down for the Bearcats. De uh, J.D. Bertrand has to come up and be able to at least turn this back inside. You cannot allow this running back to bounce outside. All your help is inside. Let's see if the move by Lawrence Metz, the right guard, trying to catch Myron Tango Vailoa Amosa in the neutral zone. And that is the five zebra chit chat at the moment. False start. Offense number 51. Five yard penalty. First down. Six penalties on Notre Dame. Five on Cincinnati here today. Yeah, he's going back to the one in the first half that happened. Very similar type play. We've said it a couple times. This would be Cincinnati's biggest win by ranking on the road. And also with what's at stake. They started high enough in the polls in the top ten that they can make a legitimate run as a group of five teams to the college football playoff. Got a close here on the road. Ritter, pass, complete. Young again. Got the penalty yardage back. We'll have second and ten coming up. Clock dives under seven in regulation. Another nice job by Desmond Ritter, recognizing the pressure. He's not going to be able to block them all, but with off coverage, he's able to get the ball out on time, get the first down. If they use Jerome Ford, the running back, he's had a good half. Oh, straight throw. Ritter, middle shot. Beautiful throw by Ritter in stride to Leonard Taylor, his tight end, who takes it inside the 20-yard line to the 15. This is a big-time throw here. Watch Desmond Ritter's eyes. He's actually, he's actually going to look left and then come back to the right and rip this ball into the seam. Nice job by the tight end. You feel a deep half safety. You bend it to the middle of the field and give the quarterback a throwing lane. in on a 300-yard game. That was 36. Cincinnati in field goal range, although that hasn't been 
a sure thing. Four, number one, he's on the 10. He's going to have first and goal for UC. It's a nice job by Ford. A lot of movement up front with the Notre Dame defensive line, linebackers pressuring. Ford navigates his way through, gets a run play now right around the five-yard line, first and goal. This is where Notre Dame defense has to come up big. you got to find a way to stop or find a way to force a field goal in this stretch of plays. And taking some time here. Milk as much of that play clock as you can. Ritter keep it. Gonna get it on Bertrand. Gonna go to the end zone. Ritter, a touchdown, Cincinnati. And he continues to refer back to the silencing of the crowd, which he's done with his play here today. Two touchdown passes. And the first one on the ground. His mom loves it. Her son's put his team up 10. It's a good job by Ritter. Fakes the run, pulls around. He got tight end. Tight end gets hung up a little bit. But he still has to outrun a defender. You've seen him do this about three or four times today, Mike. It's what his athleticism brings to this offense. Not only can he stand in the pocket, dice you up with a short passing game, he's hit a couple big ones, but also getting outside the pocket. Find a way to get in the end zone there. Will Smith, they will not through that extra point. Winners had a good half. 9-11 passing for 174 yards. And a big run there, and he was really good in every aspect of the game on that drive. That may be the one that gives Cincinnati its biggest win ever. It has quieted the crowd in South Bend for the moment. Man City on NBCSN. September 9, 2017, Georgia came in here and beat Notre Dame. Cincinnati, the Irish have won 26 in a row, the second longest home win streak. And Cincinnati sits third on that list at historic Nippert Stadium. They have been terrific, a place where Brian Kelly coached for three years. First time he's gone up against Cincinnati, and he's gone up against as good a Cincinnati team as they've seen in their 134th season of college football. Been doing this for a long time. Irish down 11. Tyree on the return. Back through the hole there, and he's brought down to 27 yard line. So we're talking about the group of five teams, teams not in the Power Five leagues, undefeated regular season. What can you do with it? Can you get a seat at the big table? Well, the Power Five bouncer is a mean dude. He wouldn't let Western Michigan through 13 and 0. Can you let me in a playoff? UCF said they won a championship. Go look at their stadium. They got a banner up there. Coastal and Cincinnati last year, I'm denied on the other side of the velvet rope. But I mentioned it with Cincinnati, they started eighth in the poll. So it gives them a chance to continue to go up. They've got a couple of tough games along the way, but this and their game two weeks ago in Indiana were their big opportunities. This one, the bigger of the two. And so far, they've delivered. Two pounds pass is incomplete for the crosser, Braden Lindsay. So what do they have left? Sitting at number seven right now. Obviously, it'll be impacted by what happens with the teams ahead of them. Can they be one of the final four teams? The game at Tulane will not be easy. SMU has been good as well. UCF has a quarterback issue that they'll have to look at with uh, Dylan Gabriel entering his clavicle. But those are the toughest spots remaining. Stand by for two months of conversation about Cincinnati and the playoff if they close this one out. Pine escaping. And he'll get two yards out of it, but not much more than that. It'll be Malik Van with a stop. It'll be third down coming up. I certainly think you have to give him strong consideration, especially with wins at Indiana and if they can pull this one out today. I think they have to win pretty convincingly down the stretch. But besides Georgia and Alabama, <laughs> please. I'm not I'm not sure I'm not sure who else you would say is in that conversation right now. Movement by the Irish offensive line, it'll cost. Notre Dame five yards. All starts. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's on John Alt. Very yappy up there. Up front, both teams. Here's Notre Dame's remaining schedule. Not going to be an easy game in Blacksburg. USC is having a good day today in Boulder, beating Colorado. And you look on down. Stanford right now is giving. 
Oregon, number three in the country, all they could want at the farm. It's the Cardinal leading 17-7 at halftime. So, their name schedule will get tougher here. Big run, big opening, third down. Tyree is stopped in the open field by Deshaun Pace. They're going to fourth down, and you almost have to go for it here with four minutes left. You've got to go for it. Still feel like, for whatever reason, if you don't get this, defense stops him. I don't think Cincinnati wants to run their field goal kicker out here at this point. So find a way. Find a way to get this. Keep this drive going. Michael Mayer came back out on the field. Two snaps to go. Fourth and five for the Irish. Michael Mayer's right here. It looks like it's man coverage. That's really your matchup. Avery Davis in the slot up top as well. Let's see if they bring pressure or choose to drop out. They're going to rush five. Pines throw is to Mayer on that injured knee. He gets it, but he is really hobbling as you get him out of there. As Mayer has a first down. They did check him out in the tent. And right away they grab him as they get out of there. Yeah, you can you can tell he's not not quite the same running that route and yet still getting five yards of separation Says a lot about him. He wants to be out there for his team. Might be one of these things where just saving for third down 315 left Irish need the ball twice so they have to be in express mode now and The 42 pines throw is deflected and he batted it down a very wise play Seen a quarterback do that a time or two yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. It's a good thing it got batted down. He's trying to throw a back shoulder throw here to Tyree. But watch Sauce over here as a cloud corner. He, his responsibility is the flat, so he's going to be aggressive. He's either going to blow that up or something bad's going to happen. Lanche Sanders, Ahmad Gardner, and then nicknamed Sauce. Darian Beavers, Deshaun Pace, all these guys with a lot of pub coming in. They looked it on film. They've looked at on the field today. Really solid players. Trying to take a run here with three minutes left down 11. Going to get as much as you can, but time is running out. It is. They definitely have to speed up this tempo. It's very much a two-minute mindset. You're down 11 points. You, you certainly need a touchdown on this drive. Andrew Kristoffik is in at right guard for the Irish. Here's Braden Lindsay. Touchdown on the last drive. He's got that one at the 41 with 244 to go. Once again, these throws to the field. You're getting free access out there with Kobe Bryant at corner. So let's take, take advantage of those opportunities. Michael Mayer has come back in the game. Wow. Let's see if they try to go back to him as well. He's hobbling. Pines throw for Avery Davis to the long side of the field, broken up by Kobe Bryant with 2.32 to go in regulation. Yeah, Michael Mayer is really hobbled. He ran a seam route down the, down the middle of the field and was just limping the entire way. I understand he wants to be out there for his guys. And if that's the case, then try to give him some routes that are shorter and he can catch. But you know he's sure-handed. You know he's going to make the catch. George Takis comes in at tight end for the Irish. Cincinnati runs four, and they get to Pine and bring him down. Malik Van had all the pressure. He's not going to get the sack, but his work was the reason Pine is put down for a loss on the play, a loss of eight. You look at it up front here. It's only a three-man rush. It's one of those situations where really the last thing that can happen is you take a sack, you put yourself in a third long situation, you have to use a timeout. I think you're really in the mindset here of trying to get half of it. You're third and 18, just try to get half of it, get yourself into a fourth and manageable situation because you're going to have to go for it. It's that situation in the game. You need two touchdowns. Could not see who that Cincinnati player was. Jabari Taylor is the one credited with the sack, so it's third and 18 for the Irish with 2.25 to go. It was uh, Malik Van, 42, who was in there. You know, it, it's funny, Drew, you talk about Cincinnati. It's going to be a conversation where you have to just extrapolate. Are they going to be better if they can go all the way than the third or fourth team, assuming Alabama and Georgia keep playing in the... Uh, their own division of the NFL down there. And they're combined 72 to 7 against Ole Miss and Arkansas today. Pine spins out of trouble, keeps himself alive, and just throws it at the feet of Takis to avoid going out of bounds. And the Irish are down to fourth and 18 with 219 left. Yeah, they, they've got a lot of down the field routes here. Would have loved to have found a way to get a completion. 
Instead, you're in a fourth and 18 situation. Makes it tough on these offensive line. If I'm Notre Dame, I'm putting tight end and running back right on the edge of these tackles to chip, chip these defensive ends. Try to give yourself more time. Pine throwing it in the middle of the field. Incomplete as Avery Davis tried to come back and get it. And Cincinnati is a few plays away from the biggest win in school history in football. And one of the big reasons is Desmond Ritter. Let's take a look at Above the Rest, brought to you by Jersey Mike's Subs. Yeah, this really sealed the deal here. And this is the mark of a championship team. When you need to put together a drive and seize the momentum back, Desmond Ritter, the short passing game, looking off to the left, hitting down the seam, and then taking it into his own hands, showing his athletic ability. This guy's the real deal. And he's got all the traits, all the intangibles, all the tangibles. This team, the Cincinnati team, obviously a hallmark victory for their program, but in what they're trying to accomplish this year, and for all the reasons that Desmond Ritter came back, mm -hmm. was to have an opportunity at the CFP playoff. Ford on the run. He'll take it to the 44-yard line. Uh, I was in school at Syracuse about 30 years ago with Dan Ward, who's one of the best broadcasters in the country. He's the voice of the University of Cincinnati for over two decades. And I had breakfast with Dan today, and he said, look, this would be the biggest win in school history. Yeah, we talk about that thing sometimes. You know, they had big moments in here and there, but to be in the situation they're in, in the group of five, to go to Notre Dame knowing that so many of the guys came back, like Ritter, like you said, Drew, for this opportunity. They showed Georgia. If you're an SEC fan, you watch them play Georgia. I know guys that exited because they were going to go to the NFL. Georgia wasn't a full team. This team looked good against the Dogs last year in the Peach Bowl, and they've come in here. Against Notre Dame team, we don't know how really good they are, but they have proven that they have all the elements it takes to be a championship caliber team. And that first down should just about close it out. I think too, Mike, it's, it's, it's the expectations that they came into this season with. It's not like they're sneaking up on anybody. It's not like they came in here and big underdog and they just kind of got lucky and, and things went their way. I mean, they, they had to go to Indiana and earn it. They were down 14-0 early in that game. And they're talking to a lot of their players this week. That was a defining moment for them, certainly for their defense, where they had to really gut it out, come together, find a way to win that game, build some confidence, come here, win in Notre Dame Stadium against a very good football team. So they are making a strong case right now. And there's no way you're going to be able to measure it except for just conversation and opinion, which is the stupidity of this system that only has four teams in a playoff. It has to be every conference champ plus the best team, not of those group of five, power five teams, I should say. So it's going to be up to folks to debate and flap their gums about if Cincinnati's good enough. It's a shame these guys don't prove it on the field because they came on the field today and proved it. Good for Cincinnati. They will end Notre Dame's second longest home win streak. It'll stop at 26. It's the highest ranked opponent Cincinnati's ever beaten on the road. Desmond Ritter, for all his yapping and all his conversation, there's some class there, too. We love talking to this guy. He's got confidence. He does. You, you, need, you need confidence. Yep. You need confidence. He, he probably didn't know that, that what he would say would become bulletin board material, but he came here and backed it up. But don't you love guys who they, they wear it on their sleeve for 60 minutes, and when that 60th minute expires, he, he's as classy as possible. And Notre Dame's... Undefeated season will stop at 4-0. And Desmond Ritter is going to run down towards those Cincinnati fans down there and celebrate with them as they are all over to the south end of the stadium. Give them their moment. <laughs> the only bad moment of his day. Here's Catherine Tappen with Luke Fickle. Coach, congratulations. A thrilling win. You got the fans here as well. Where does this win rank in the program's history? Well, Coach Kelly kind of set the standard here at UC, and uh, we're just trying to increase the standards now. And obviously this is up there with one of them. We said we had to beat a top 10 football program. This is a top five program we just beat today. You told me at halftime you wanted to see how your group was able to respond in the second half. How did they do? Well, they made it a little tighter than I'd like, but uh, we hadn't played 
four quarters yet this year. And uh, we had to play all four quarters today. We were a little shaky in the third, but we were moving to football. Uh, but they never they never quit. They never they never faltered. And uh, I'm so proud of them. Your quarterback came back for a fifth season to play in big games like this. What can you say about his performance today? He's unbelievable. I mean, you always have a chance when you got a guy like Desmond Ritter. And that kid, I tell you what, he's, he's a winner. And uh, I take him everywhere I go. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you. Mike? Such a huge win, Catherine, for the University of Cincinnati. Where was this program when Brian Kelly got there? And Fickle was classy to kind of acknowledge that. You had to buy football tickets to get basketball tickets. And basketball is the hot ticket because Bob Huggins had the Bearcats rolling. So when Brian Kelly got there for the first game he coached, behind him from 30-yard line to 30-yard line, stands were empty. They weren't coming for Cincinnati football. Brian Kelly built it into something that could be like this, a 34-6 run. And what Luke Fickle has come in and done, very similar type turnaround. Sellout crowd. It was a great crowd. Students were here throughout. The Irish will try to find a way to get phase two of their season going in Blacksburg against Virginia Tech. And the folks heading back the four-hour drive, the 250 miles to Cincinnati, they will do it in a very happy fashion. We talked to Desmond Ritter. We had a chance to visit with him. A dad, a really impressive young man. And on the football field, he showed all that today, Drew. He absolutely did. He, he, he lived up to the billing. It, it's amazing. It's amazing when you hear his teammates talk about him, hear his coaches talk about him, his family, uh, and those that are closest to him. And just what a tremendous young man he is. Mature beyond his years. And I always love to see guys that... He, listen, he graduated. He, he could have moved on to the NFL. Right. But, but he made a conscious de decision to come back to this program because he knew how good a team they had, but also to be able to achieve their hopes and dreams of being in the college football playoff. Before we leave, let's hear from him quick. Catherine Tappen, you're down there. Yes, I am. Des is here hugging all of his teammates and his family. Des, and what does this victory mean to you? Oh, huge, huge. Not just for me, for this whole team, whole, whole campus, whole community, whole city. It's huge. What will you remember most about this evening here at Notre Dame? The finish, the fight, the grit from the whole team. All four quarters, 60 minutes. Just our team being great. That's, oh, wow, I'm just lost of words right now. Desmond, congratulations. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mike. I'm sure his little daughter Leighton is watching happy. His partner, Leighton's mom, Claire, and his mom, Sarah. Her phone is blowing up. Congratulations, <laughs> University <laughs> of Cincinnati. Bearcats beat the Irish 24-13. Thanks on NBC, except on the West Coast, your local news. We've got another name post game show for you. Straight ahead on Peacock. We're back here three weeks in primetime when the Irish take on USC, one of the great rivalries in the sport. Thanks to Rob Hyland, our great producer, Charlie Dammeyer, our director. And with Drew Brees and Catherine Tapp and Mike Tirico, we're off to Foxborough for the Brady return tomorrow night on NBC. This great weekend continues. Thanks for watching Notre Dame Football, presented by Invesco. Q, Q, Q. Hello.